Hi, I am here with Lazy Maybe, a beloved Deep Rock Galactic content creator. He has an excellent channel. I suggest you go check him out. Uh, we are here to rank all the overclocks in Deep Rock Galactic. We will be using a fairly laissez-faire criteria to rank each overclock, uh, generally just based on how happy we would be to receive the overclock as a newer player. Uh, this is because some overclocks, like for example, active stability system for the M1000, don't grant extremely powerful effects, but they do augment a great weapon into an even greater one, compared to something like AI Stability Engine, which takes something very mediocre and makes it quite good. There would be a bit of an incongruity if we were to rank something like Active Stability System as C tier because it doesn't provide huge buffs to the base gun, but it will also be unfair to AI Stability Engine because the overclock is providing extreme buffs to a bad base. Um, without further ado, let's get started. Uh, we're starting with the flamethrower here. First up, we have lighter tanks. This is a plus 75 ammo upgrade, I believe. I think this is, like, not super impressive. The flamethrower already doesn't run into too many ammo problems, um, especially with sticky flames and heat radiance, but it's a decent upgrade to a pretty good weapon. Any yeah, opinions? Yeah, it's, it's fine. I think... I thought this had like a reload speed buff, but it doesn't. That's yeah, weird. it doesn't. It, it, it seems sounds like, like it, it would. would. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's uh, like C tier. It's not amazing. It's not game changing, but it's a, it's a decent upgrade. Non-transformative. Yeah. Just barely better than base. Mm -hmm. uh, sticky additive is one second of sticky flame and like one direct flame damage, if I recall. Uh, it's like nothing. Uh, one second is okay in terms of sticky flame uptime, but like 23221 already gets good enough sticky flame uptime that the the additional time is really not not anything to write home about and the extra damage per particle is just like nothing. Four man's sticky fuel basically. Yeah, I think it's basically equivalent to base in my opinion. Um yeah. compact feed valves is a 25 ammo upgrade and I believe 75 max ammo with uh, a 2 meter range downgrade and extra reload speed. Um, the range kind of hurts, but the reload speed is nothing because the flamethrower has a pretty strong animation cancel. Um, the mag size is pretty big. I think mag size upgrades in general are quite strong, uh, which lets you abuse heat radiance pretty well. Um, and the ammo upside is 75, which isn't game changing, but it's pretty good. I think yeah, this is if like we a... can like mm -hmm. jump ahead slightly here, it, okay. it's worth mentioning that this is for like similar builds uh, that you would run on Face Melter. You can basically do exactly the same thing better with this. Yes, I completely The only agree. difference is, like, I have a soft spot for Face Melter basically just because uh, I like using it for lazy sabotage runs mm -hmm. because yeah, same here. I can hold M1 at bugs, it kills them a little faster, and I can also hold one at M1 at robots. But yeah. I mean, we'll we'll get to it. It's not very good. Yeah. Combat, it's like a B tier overclock, I think. It's a bit stronger than letter tanks. It's nothing amazing, but it's not bad. Um, Fuel Stream Diffuser, I think, is one of the most slept on overclocks in the game, to be honest. Uh, it doesn't seem super impressive because it's a uh, 5 meter extra range and 20% slower firing rate, but it's actually like a clean in disguise. Um, the slower firing rate makes you more ammo efficient in terms of sticky fuel and heat ready, uh, and heat. Radiance, um, and the plus five meters range is it's huge. It it basically eliminates any range issues you would ever have in almost any cave. You can reach the ceiling pretty consistently unless it's a bigger biome, but even then you don't need that much range. Um, yeah, well, I think this well, is it's like, like from base, it's a fifty percent range increase. It's big. Yeah, it's really big. Um, I think this is like an S tier overclock. Honestly, uh, I used to not be so keen on it, but as I've played with it more, it, it just feels really good to use. Uh, and with like 2 3 2 2 one the sticky flame uptime isn't even that bad, uh, and you can you have the ammo and the bank size to place multiple layers of sticky, uh, and it's a little more aggressive because you get to push with heat radiance compared to sticky fuel. Uh, so I, I think it's like an S tier overclock, or maybe not S tier, but it's, it's like an A. Yeah. It's like a high A. I, I would say lower, yeah. I would say like probably... I would say like low a high b although we're not ordering within tiers mm -hmm. but okay that makes sense i think it's like second best crisper overclock yeah i would we know agree. what this one is already 
I think it's like in honestly in vanilla and it might even be equivalent with sticky fuel, at least for my playstyles, because I kind of sticky fuel is, is more defensive overall, I feel. Because you in can't vanilla, really, yeah. Yeah, you can't really do heat radiant stuff with it. Um and with the old screen refuser, you get to like hold M1 and press M1 uh and press yeah. W. If you're um, not running like has six times two or higher then you're not getting as much value from sticky flame traps mm -hmm. so like sticky fuels value goes down a bit mm -hmm. um especially if you're doing pubs and random people are just shooting the bugs before yes. they walk into the flames for no reason uh -huh. so you you couldn't definitely make a case that in vanilla this is a bit better than sticky fuel but yeah in modded um, difficulties sticky fuel is like the best yes i would agree in most modded difficulties uh like with stuff like send stuff like send it there's a, a case for FSD, but I digress. Um, face Melter. I'm going to put it here preemptively. Um, I think this is a really bad overclock. The extra damage is basically useless unless you're trying to overheat bugs, or, or bots, rather. Um, against bugs, it's okay to use direct fuel, like your direct flames, but it's really ammo inefficient, uh, and there's not much reason to be using it. Um, especially since heat radiance tends to kill the 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 veterans that can make it past your sticky flames, it's really not great. And the the mag size downgrade is really really rough, uh, especially for an overclock that wants to hold M1 as much as this one does. Uh, and the decreased range is also really bad because of kind of the same reason. You you want to be hitting stuff with the 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 stream if you're to get any value out of this overclock in it. The downsides just really don't let you do that. Um, the flow rate is also a downside because it makes heat radiance and sticky flames worse. But yeah, well, I mean, the flow rate is an upside against patrol bots. Yes, basically, yeah. where else it's a downside. Mm -hmm. But like, I mean, like I said, I I have a soft spot for face melter, but it oh, cut out for a second there. It's it's downsides are they are its downsides are set up in a way where it's like they are assuming that the direct damage up is a lot more impactful than it really is. Yeah, I would agree. I think this is, like, just the worst by far, and it's not even close. Um, sticky Fuel, we were talking about it a little earlier. It makes your Sticky Flames, which are, like, the strongest things the Flamethrower does, uh, a lot stronger. They have more damage um, in exchange, or in last longer. Uh, but in exchange, you get... Minus 25 for tank size and minus 75 fuel, I believe. Um, yeah. Usually people take the tier 4 ammo upgrade in, to counteract that. Um, and you don't miss out on the Sticky Flame upgrade in that duration because, or in that tier, because the plus 6 seconds Sticky Flame duration from the Silver Clock counteracts that. Um, yeah, you're getting a, one that's twice as good anyway. Yeah. Uh, it kind of suffers from not being able to use heat radiance as well as other overclocks because it's uh it's ma uh, it's magazine size or tank size. Um, but I think it's very strong because it makes your strongest thing even stronger. Uh, it's extremely ammo efficient as well. Uh, there's probably no more ammo efficient grunt clear in the game compared to this. Yeah, uh, like I said earlier, this this is different between. Like vanilla has five and modded difficulties, but it's good in both of them. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's hard to put this anywhere other than in vanilla. You could put it in A if we're taking into account modded difficulties. It should be an S. Yeah, I think we can put it in A as like a. Well, we'll we can move it up or down later yeah, depending well, on how it we feel, just but... depends on. Are we including like has six times two and such in this tier list? Mm -hmm. I think even there, it's not like. Compared to other stuff that I would think of as being as, not as it's transformative, not like, yeah, it's not as transformative. It's really strong. Don't get me wrong, but it's like, it's not, it's not overwhelmingly strong compared to some other stuff that comes to mind. Um, if that makes sense, okay. I'm just gonna keep it a tier for now. Um, improved thermal efficiency is a okay overclock for a pretty good base gun i think generally it's you get a little more uptime with your stream and it's a little more ammo efficient i is it actually does it take well, it, gives, it gives you more ammo yeah it, it's like 25 though it's like barely anything yeah it's a small amount but yeah. yeah i mean it doesn't give you big benefits but it's um it's giving you 
it's giving you more of the gun and and the gun is like and none of the overclocks are uh, other overclocks are particularly amazing but this one isn't like isn't yeah, huge I mean, either the... but it just does what the crowd cannon does a little better and that's that's a pretty good upside it's the only clean for the gun as well so um yeah. i don't think it's the upside isn't like crazy good i think it's like a c or b uh but the the base crowd cannon is good enough that it like partially compensates um i would put it at a b personally because i think if you just want to do like straightforward hold m1 cryo cannon stuff it is the best yes yeah I would and agree. i think it was the best even back when tuned cooler was perfectly tuned cooler mm -hmm. yeah i i would definitely agree uh yeah i i i, I can vibe with b um speaking of tuned cooler here uh i think it's worse than nothing now it used to have no downside, and then they added a downside because it was so popularly picked. Uh, but I think the plus flow rate was never like a huge benefit, if it was a benefit at all, because uh, flow rate just makes cold radiance less efficient. And cold radiance is the bulk of your safety uh, if you're playing a difficulty that's reasonably grunt dense. Yeah. It, it should be said that, like, a lot of the time, the thing that you saw for both perfectly tuned cooler and the current tuned cooler is that enemies all have, or almost all, except for ones that have like temperature scale effects, they all have uh, freezing temperatures that are in increments of 10. So hitting 10 mm. freeze power is important, quote unquote. It's not actually important. It almost never... Like for any big enemy, any enemy that takes any real time to freeze, what actually determines your freeze breakpoint is cold radiance, mm -hmm. unless you're doing it from far away. If you're... Yeah. And the thing yeah. is, even if it's not cold radiance determining it, it's still just not a big difference. It's like, you know, usually one or two cold particles or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which like, is, uh... considering the rate you, you shoot out cold particles, it's like almost meaningless. Yeah, I, I believe like the difference between Mectera with just Ite uh, and 10 freeze tune cooler is like two frames because tune cooler freezes at two frames before cold radiance triggers um i i, I think generally the targets you would want to be using tune cooler on to freeze like uh flying enemies you don't actually want to be using the crowd cannon for because you have a, a secondary slot with thin containment field that is generally better at dealing with makara and you also have axes um and it doesn't freeze so much faster that you actually like get that much more safety from it. Yeah. Uh, well, I think it's I think it's worth I'm I'm still actually going to disagree with you slightly here. I okay. think it's approximately equivalent to base. Because okay. if you're playing if you want to play around like a longer reach with tier two B, I mm -hmm. think it's like okay. Yeah. That that makes sense. I, I think the yeah, it's not a huge deal to miss ammo in tier two. I I can I can agree with that though. My it's like experience? a low in that yeah. in that rank, but I think it's like barely sneaking up into there personally. Mm. I okay, don't like yeah. running it at all, I should mention, because I hate plus zero point two charge up time. Yes. Right. I, I agree. And, like, and if you like want to mitigate that, you have to take not take the mag size in tier one, and that's not good because you're all of a sudden the depressurization downside like actually fucks up your uptime. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, I, I, I can agree with approximately equivalent. I think it's worse personally, but uh, we'll move on. I think this one is very clearly worse than nothing. Um, it has a, an upside that's like completely irrelevant if you take typical tier 1 meg size builds with tier 3 charge up, um, or depressurization rather. Um, and the downside of losing a lot more uh, tank size is pretty bad uh, and the flow rate is not actually an upside as we've discussed earlier uh i think this is like it, it's very bad it's not good at all I think it has it's no upside. funny i think it's funny to hold down m1 endlessly on a dreadnought <laughs> but yeah it, it's definitely like not strong yeah i mean it, like if you want to freeze a couple grunts forever like this is your ever uh but I think it's it's not very good at all. Thing is, improved thermal efficiencies, uh, pressure drop rate modifier plus the tier one, uh, a pressure drop modifier together mean that like you only lose pressure at one fourth the normal rate, roughly. Mm -hmm. 
So it's like that already lets you shoot long enough for basically any realistic circumstance. Um, yeah. And this is like, this technically lets you shoot longer, but it's not practical. Yeah, like so like even in modded hard. where the storms are endless, you never have uptime and downsides with the or you never have uptime issues with the crowd cannon if you take it. It's it's really like it third expansion solves an issue that is not an issue. Um next we have Ice Spear. This one has a one second repressurization delay as the downside, I believe, which is like not a real downside. Um in exchange you get a ice spear that deals like 350 direct damage, I believe, and some 150 area. Um, it has, like, no downside. It's basically clean. The Ice Spear itself uh, takes up a lot of ammo to use, but it can be nice because you can obliterate frozen Praetorian Suppressors, uh, one-shot normal goobers, um, yeah. one-shot menaces. I think it's, it's a really nice flexibility thing for Driller. Um, yeah, like if you're using the Ice Spear, you are probably either using it in a situation where it's important that you use it or that it will end up like saving you ammo efficiency in the long run anyways because like you're out of axes or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And also you don't always want to use axes, like all eight axes yeah. on a frozen oppressor because um, there are better yeah. things to use them for. Um, yeah, I, I think this is pretty strong. It's like... I think it's it's high B, maybe even low A. Uh, yeah, I think I think I would put it in B, but it is it's mm. definitely like. I think this is one of the best things you can run on on cryo cannon. Yeah, I would agree, and it's a lot of fun too. It it makes your driller feel a lot more uh, self sufficient. The only thing that is bad against this, which is not really a problem with ice spear, is some enemies' weak point hitboxes, like ah uh, yes, being too close to their uh, normal damage hitboxes. So like shooting yeah. spitballers is yeah. unnecessarily finicky, mm -hmm. and so on. Wardens too. Yeah. Um, next, ice storm. Uh, I think this is a similar case to ice spear. Um, in that it gives the driller a lot more self-sufficiency, but Ice Storm compared to Ice Spear uh, is just more of a general grunt clear thing, whereas Ice Spear is good for larger targets. Um, if your team is not like super on top of killing the crowd enemies, uh, I think Ice Storm is really, really strong, especially in pubs or in solos. Um, I think it might be like the strongest solo option for driller, um, even in like 6x2. It's one of the strongest. Um, but it does suffer if your like team can actually kill the crowd enemies, because you don't really need to waste all that freezing power and all that ammo efficiency just to kill enemies that are no longer a threat. Uh, if your team can do that, at least way more ammo efficiently. Um, but I think it's good enough in pubs and solos that I'd put it in like in B tier. I think it's like approximately equivalent. I'm gonna put a little lower, but that's fair. I think that like this is the overclock you equip if you want a version of fragile that actually does something. Yes. If you oh. want fragile, that's not dog shit. Yes, fragile is so bad. It's actually impressive how bad they made that. And it it, it doesn't even make sense if you claim that ghost ship balances around hazard four because it doesn't work on hazard four. Like, ah. Oh. Okay. Anyways, that aside, uh, I think it's B tier. I'm just gonna put it there for now. Um, snowball is another alternate firing mode thing. Uh, it gives you minus 100 tank size, I believe, uh, and a one second repressurization delay, if I recall correctly, which is not... The tank size is the one that matters. Yeah, yeah. The tank size is actually kind of rough if you want to spam snowballs, but the snowballs themselves recently got buffed to only cost like 25 ammo now, so it's not a huge problem. Yeah, they cost 35 before, I think. Yeah. Uh, though the recent breeder buff, nerf, nerf to snowball did hurt it a bit, because now it can no longer freeze breeders in one shot. I think it's still pretty strong. Uh, for the ammo cost, it's, it's a lot of freezing power. It basically freezes everything except the largest enemies uh, in one snowball. Um... It's great for Mactera plague missions because uh, you can. It's like one cryo nade for twenty five ammo. It's uh, and you don't lose any base cryo cannon efficacy with this. Uh, just you just lose a bit of ammo efficiency. 
I think this is like approximately equivalent to like Ice Spear and Improved Thermal Efficiency. Um, it's better against a different set of enemies. Uh, it's also just like the base Cryo Cannon. I'd agree, but I think it it is it is a bit situational, and you will sometimes have missions where you don't get good use out of the snowball. Yes. Where yeah. you don't get many opportunities to use it, and then it feels like, why am I taking this? But on the flip side, you do also get missions where a bunch of Mactera spawn out of a wall and you one-shot them. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'd agree. But even in those missions where it's like you don't feel its impacts that much, uh, the downsides aren't huge. The tank size is is like a, a reasonable portion, but it's not a huge deal in most cases, I'd say. Um, I think it's like a, another B tier. It's like around the same. Uh, uh, yeah, you're you're losing like I don't know less than less than a, a fifth of your ammo or something. Yeah, yeah, it's you go from six twenty five to or seven twenty five to six twenty five, which is not a huge deal. Um, at least with one 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 three two, which is what you should be running. Um. Hydrogen ion additive here, uh, it's like a little bit more DOT on your sludge pump. Or this is these are sludge pump overclocks, um, a little bit more DOT and a little bit more slow. It's like very very negligible amounts of both. Uh, this feels completely identical to just using base sludge pump. Um, I would say the the slow is a little noticeable. The slow is definitely better than the yeah, damage. Yeah, yeah. The slow is like a upside. like a twenty to thirty percent increase, if I believe, if I remember correctly. But like the damage is like I don't know, like five percent or something. Um, it used to be a lot better. I mean, Sludge Pump has gotten its numbers tweaked multiple times. There was a mm -hmm. point where this was a pretty strong overclock. Now it's like it's fine. Yeah, I think it's like basically the same thing as base. Um, like, I, I cannot notice it at all, personally. Well, I think, I mean, the, the slow, I think from, from, a if you're not taking the slow upside, it takes it from, like, 35% slow to, like, around 45. Mm -hmm. It's, I think it's, well, let me put it this way. If we're putting crisper, lighter tanks in C, I think this should also be in C. Okay, yeah, I, I can, I can get behind that. I actually, I don't know. I don't know. It's like it's so unnoticeable. <laughs> I feel, I feel well. Okay, I feel the slow increase a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit. And like, if plus seventy five crisper ammo is C, I feel like that should also be C because sticky additive is like almost literally nothing. You get plus uh -huh. one second sticky flames. I think this is a a little better than that. A little bit. Okay, okay, we'll, we'll put it we'll put it in C for now. I think it should be a, a tier lower, but uh, we capitulate. Um, AG Mixtron is next. This just makes your projectiles shoot further, uh, and they're a little more accurate, I believe. Um, or not a little more accurate. When you charge your shot, that like they don't spread out as much. Um, it's like kind of nice for shooting things on the ceiling if you really want to be doing that uh you it's get like fine, question mark yeah i'm not sure if I it's actually, like like it better sometimes sometimes not having an arc to your shots is bad though if you want to like lob them over like yeah a yeah. bit of brain so it it's weird yeah and it's it's like a little rougher for getting your charge shots into the middle of hordes but it also has like some benefits um i feel like it probably is good for some people because of their playstyle, and then other people will just not use it at all. Um, I don't know. In a perfect world, this would make your charge shot fragments uh, ignore gravity and just, like, go up back into the ceiling that you hit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you get, like... That, that'd be crazy. You, like, shoot the opposite side, and it just... Okay, anyways, uh, I think it's, like, about the same as base. Uh, maybe it's C tier, you could argue, because you get to shoot some web spitters sometimes. Um, I like, guess, but, like, you could just shoot the web spitters with your secondary, so it's... Yeah, okay, yeah, I think I think it's, like, it's it's whatever. 
um volatile impact mixture here this one i feel like it is one of the overclocks that's most impacted by modded in my experience um it has five it feels like you can just like press m1 on everything and it you just dies. everything it's yeah overclock. it's very very strong um on has six by two you start to feel the uh the sustainability downsides of this a bit more because there are too many grunts to just press m1 on uh and Compared to something like Disperser Compound, you're a lot weaker against Stormers because your petals last for so little. Uh, for reference, this Overclock makes you deal twice the regular shot damage and twice the charge shot damage um, in exchange for corrosive, like, half of your puddle down up time. No. In exchange for 25% of your puddle up time and half of your yeah. corrosive dot uh, which is not a huge deal because or the latter one is not a huge deal because you can just like you kill them outright by hitting them um but it, it does suffer from some uptime issues because of the puddle duration um i think this is still a very strong overclock though the the one like big gripe i have with it is the sludge pump obliterates your hp if you try to shoot a charge shot when something is close to you um so yeah, normally Sludge really Pump annoying. self damage is like annoying. With this, it can actually be like potentially yes. a bit dangerous. Yes, it can. Like I, I have died to this overclock before, uh, but I think it's still like a like a A tier overclock, or probably in vanilla it's like S tier because you just click M one and everything dies. Um, but when there's like sustainability issues or when you're like the last one alive and it has five four player mission, you can feel that it doesn't hold down an area as well as other stuff does. Uh, so I, I think it's like an A tier, high A tier, personally. Yeah, I think I think A tier makes sense because, I mean, a lot of the stuff on your, your channel is, like, modded focus, so we should, mm -hmm. we should be taking that into account. And it does get worse against big bug densities on yes. 6 times 2 or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think it's A. Uh, I think in modded, it's like, it's, like, honestly, like, B. But yeah, I think... We count for vanilla sometimes on this channel. Okay, uh, Disperser Compound. <laughs> um, this one just gives you six more charge shot fragments, which is like a little less than double. Um, it takes you from 12 to 18 with 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, I think? Question mark? Might have to double check that. Normal fragment count is like eight. Um, and if you're taking... Let me see. Yeah, normally you'd be at 12. Uh huh. Okay, so it's like fifty fifty percent. Uh, unless you don't take tier two B. Um, yeah, but you should. Yes, you should. It gives you a lot of fragments, like a ton of fragments. Yeah. It also makes them this, deal this more. This is damage. one of those overclocks that is just kind of like perfectly set up to be good because mm -hmm. it's it's giving you something that's useful and the downside, kind it's, of negligible because like yeah. it, you're doing less area damage, but you're doing more damage in the area because you have more fragments. Yeah. So who cares? And the fragments themselves do more damage too, if I remember correctly. It's like uh, plus four or something. Um. So the extra fragments make yeah. kind of make up for the area damage. Uh, this one has, I think it makes up for one of Sludge Bump's biggest downsides. Uh, it like covers the entire area, uh, wherever you shoot it, which is yeah, uh, you're more like, consistently getting like a a nice mm -hmm. spread of puddles. Mm -hmm. It's also nice for like fire spread puddle things, um, because you get a lot more connection, uh, and it's also really good against Vectera typically because you get like the extra fragment stuff lets you hit a lot more uh a lot more enemies a lot more consistently if they're flying uh, i think this is like i think this is sludge's best overclock um i don't i don't think it's like s tier transformative but it's i think it's up there with these two overclocks yeah i think it's like a yeah high a yeah it's impossible to put it any lower than that mm -hmm. Um, next is Goob Armor Special. I can't even remember the upsides for this thing. It's like longer puddles, bigger puddles. Uh, but the downside is, is that... It does also give you more fragment oh, yeah, 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 damage, yeah, 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 I think. Yeah. But, like, who cares? It, this one's, it again, it's funny. It can be fun to mess around with. It's not good. Yeah, the, the shape is, like, the exact opposite of what you would like it to be, because typically enemies don't, like, walk in a straight line towards you. Um, and... You also lose the benefit of being able to like hit enemies with your charge shot and having 
huge coverage that way. Um, Having really long uptime on some burning puddles is fun. Yes, uh, yeah. But the way that you have to, like, you have to shoot out a line and then move like around the line in a circle yes. to get like set up in a good position is it's it's the opportunity cost to actually doing that in a fight is like pretty terrible yeah yeah and especially if you have like teammates who would like you to kill things for them and you're like spending the time running around in a circle trying to like hit the bugs with your gun yeah, just... so like normally normally when you put down like an area denial effect and your goober teammates just kill the bugs <laughs> by by unloading into them, mag dumping into them before they run into it. Uh -huh. Normally, they shouldn't have done that. With Goom Bomber Special, it's actually like it's long enough and awkward enough to set up that like it is understandable that people like just kill the bugs uh, before you've got your like big X of goo on the ground on fire or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I I've had some fun times with the, this overclock and like has five though like. Getting a pub to ignite one puddle and trying to keep like a perpetually lit line of goo through the entire mission. It's like yeah. one of the funniest ways to fuck around as driller, but it's not good. It's really not good. I think it's worse than nothing. Yeah. Um second okay. story, but yeah. <laughs> uh next, sludge blast. This is a really weird one. Uh it makes your puddles like shoot out in a shotgun blast thing, which do less damage but have more projectiles if i remember correctly they 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 like use the the damage of the charge shot, yeah the charge shot i think but it's lower i don't know whatever you can play with it and see it for yourself it's it's yeah, a really I mean weird long game. story short it does like a lot of damage to if you shotgun something big it can do a lot of damage it's pretty clunky to deal with big groups of enemies mm -hmm. and it's pretty painful uh, ammo-wise. Yes, it has it, like a huge... so because the ammo downside is not like I mean minus forty is significant. Yeah, it's like a point of it, ammo. It feels like more than it is because because mm -hmm. you your don't individual blasts use are like sludge less pump to... efficient. Yeah, well, also like you don't use sludge pump to chunk down single targets normally. So like mm -hmm. you end up dumping a lot of ammo to do the thing where you like oh you quickly kill an oppressor or whatever. Yeah. But it, it costs so much of your ammo to do. Yeah. Um, there are also, like, you can sort of deal with storms with this if you're really far away. The The sludge blast shoots a lot of projectiles and covers a decent area. But a lot of the time, like, one guard eats your entire shotgun blast and it's just wasted. Yeah. Um, and that feels sludge really bad. Pump, uh, copium addicts will say it's amazing because you can shoot it, like, at ceilings and walls better than normal sludge bump except then when like a group of bugs is walking you at the ground normally yeah but uh, it sucks compared to normal sludge bump yeah yeah i would definitely agree it's also like really rough uh friendly fire wise because like if one dwarf gets in front of you they eat all the fragments and die uh and if you get too close to a bug you eat all the fragments and die um it's good for dreads but it's like even against dreads, I find it's often very ammo efficient. Even like I would rather use volatile impact mixer against dreads because then yeah. I'm like, you, if you actually use it to do good damage output against dreads, again you end up like spending your ammo so quickly. Like you, your teammates will still be like decent on ammo and you'll be running out. Mm -hmm. And like oftentimes, I find when I'm pushing with this overclock, I just end up spamming normal shots. Like I don't use the charge drops at all, which is not how you should use such bump with anything but them. Um, but like. The sludge blast is just so awkward to take advantage of. I think it's like, it's really bad. Uh, I think, despite its upsides, contextually, I think overall it is worse than nothing. Yes, I, I would agree. It takes a lot of effort to make work, uh, and like you, kind of really want neurotoxin and like persistent plasma if you're taking this. Um, and it it can situationally have some benefits, but it's it's just so much work to make uh, useful. Um, now we're moving on to the Sabata. Oh boy. <laughs> we'll start with a great one. Chain hit. Um, if you hit a weak point, you have 75%. Yeah. Like, okay, sure, it gives you 75% more DPS, theoretically. But 75% more than zero is, like, still zero. Um, <laughs> it's, it's still the Sabata, and, like, it ricochets into worthless grunts half the time. 
uh, most um, of the time, rather. The thing is, I, I will I will say, Sabata's single target damage is not that bad, but mm. it is living under the shadow of EPC thin containment field. Yes. Always. Yeah. So, like, if you're trying to, like, be strong and be optimal, like, you will... We, ha we kind of have to, like, preface all of the Sabata stuff with saying that even high damage output Sabata stuff, like, you can make Sabata do... Pretty good like the best you can make it do the best single target of any of Gunner's secondaries, but it's still not much better than single target than Thin Containment Field. And then and Thin Containment, Containment Field, Field is also everything. doing that same damage in a big AoE. Yeah. So like why would you use it? Yeah. That's like always the issue with it. Is yeah. that just that Thin Containment Field exists? I I, I, I would tend to agree. Uh driller secondaries are kind of kind of fucked up because in an thin alternate field universe exists? where thin containment field didn't exist or was way worse, then Sabata would be looked at more favorably. Mm -hmm. But you know, it doesn't live in that universe. So yeah, uh, chain hit is like, I think it's like this is nothing. Um, your your shots on weak point hits will usually uh, ricochet, but then when they ricochet, they will usually ricochet into something that's not a weak point and yes. do significantly less damage. And it's and it's also it's going to ricochet into a grunt that's like already dying to your ten CC effects. Um, yeah. Homebrew powder, same story. One point one times damage. Who cares? One point one times Homebrew zero. Homebrew powder is, is still only zero. even fun on the bulldog, and it's. I, I mean, I I think it's like okay on the bulldog, but it's mostly that's mostly just because of the fun factor. Mm -hmm. It's not actually that good even there. On anything else, it's like... Yeah, all the homebrew patterns are just not, not good. 1.1 times damage is just not enough extra for a whole overclock slot. And also, like, sometimes you low roll and you miss breakpoints unless you build for specific damage breakpoints, um, which is another annoying yeah. factor, and you miss out on other stuff because of that. Um, oversized mag is actually... A reasonable buff. Uh, I said before that oversized mag buffs, is pretty good. Yes, uh, are Again, usually pretty good. I didn't. I like this more than I used to. Yes, um, I would agree. Because of the input buffer, it is mm -hmm. more comfortable to mash M1 and get max fire rate on Sabata now. Mm -hmm. uh, and the extra so, reload time downside is like nothing. Yeah, um, it's, it's. This is just like if you want to like use a typical Sabata. I think this is probably your best take. I mean, yeah, yeah, I, I would mean, agree. It's if you're it's, not using something like if you don't want it to be something gimmicky. None, none of the Sabata stuff is like very gimmicky, but mm -hmm. by yeah. the standards of the weapon, this is like the best standard thing. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think it's it's like pretty decent, and with the recent buffs, it doesn't feel terrible to use. But it's like it's still on the Sabata, uh, which is pretty rough. Um, I think it's like. As an overclock, it increases your performance enough that it would be like a B tier or an A tier, but I, I it's just like on the Sabata, so I, I can't put I it in the I think the highest we can C. put it is B tier. Yeah, and like C, C does make more sense when we're taking into account the actual weapon. It definitely should not be an A. Yes. Um, automatic fire is a lot more rate of fire. It breaks a double trigger mod in tier 3. Um, it gives you a lot more recoil as well. Uh, I like this overclock a decent amount it gives you a pretty significant dps boost and it makes your like finger not hurt when you use the weapon yeah. um plus two rate of fire is nice i do i do still think even since the input buffer change that sabata should have some way to make it full auto that does not require an overclock but yeah. as long as this, this exists plus two rate of fire is nice but the recoil downsides a little steep for what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, I I think with the like the tier reshuffling, it's not too bad because now it's like the tier three ac uh, recoil buff is competing with double trigger and like a reload boost, which is not a huge yeah. deal. So you're not missing out on much by taking the recoil mod. Um, yeah, it's easier to get like it's easier to take this on like an accurate build and uh, just have it be more controllable. Mm -hmm. Which is already what I was doing before, but it's better now. Yeah. Um, I yeah, think like I, th I think it's like fine. I, yeah. Maybe we could put this in B, B yeah. or C. Yeah. Give the Sabata users a, a bone, I suppose. <laughs> um, uh, I don't even. I don't know though. Like compared to this stuff, it's like it's still on if the Sabata. If it's in B, it's a low B. 
Yes, it's very low. It's like down here, like. But, okay, whatever. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Put it like seeing a Sabata overlock in the B tier just like looks wrong to me. Um, I don't care if it's in B or C. Really. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm Either putting C. It just, this just feels more natural. Like it makes more sense to me. Um, explosive reload is now it's actually only better against like one X weak points, I believe. Um, it used to be like just the best DPS for the Sabata period, but now with the buff to the weak point bonus, um, I think automatic fire out DPS is it on like stuff like Spitballers or Bulks or Menaces. Um, it does accept that it is, it is easier to use this at range. Yes, because you just have to tap fire, uh, and you don't have to deal with the recoil. I, it's like in most situations, it it's like about the same. I feel. Um, also, I, I I've been playing like more Remnant Two than DRG lately because you know Remnant Two just came out, so mm -hmm. I don't know if they like hot fix this at some point. Does explosive reload still do the thing with NTSC where you can apply it through heavy armor? I'm actually not sure. Huh. Or I, NCTC. I, I, I don't think I've read any patch notes about that. Um, yeah, so I, I haven't tried it super recently, but I don't think they've changed that. Yeah, I don't think they've changed that. It's kind of a marginal thing, but like if you're mm. using Sludge Pump and if you're going to be using Explosive Reload, I feel like you might as well use Sludge Pump and then you can like shoot oppressors through their armor. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. I feel like Blow Through being on Tier 5 has been okay for this overclock though, because you sometimes get value on it in Prey Storms. Um, and also, it can help against Mac Hero sometimes if your like teammates are, are not doing things. Um, it's like I, I mean, feel like it's, it's like it's definitely insane. easier to take blow through on this than it is yeah. on um, embedded detonator Zooks. So mm -hmm. sure, yeah. Either way, this is this is one of the better ones for. Mm -hmm. I feel like I could I could accept this. I, being I think it's D, like, but it feels. I like think it's a little better than automatic fire, but they're pretty close. Yeah, I I would agree. I'll, we'll put it in C. Like, make a nice shape. Um, Trank rounds next. This is such a weird overclock. I I really don't know how to feel about this because uh, you get a pretty long six second stun, I believe, uh, and you get like slows, but it's not perfectly consistent because it's only a fifty percent chance, and it also like demolishes the usability of your weapon as a weapon. Yeah, you um, lose you, minus four mag size actually matters quite a bit on Sabata, yes. and you the, lose twenty five percent of your rate of fire as well. Yeah, which is and a like lot of rate of fire. The thing is, tranquilizer round fans talk up tranquilizer rounds CC a lot, but the thing is, your primary weapons already have incredible CC that is like way better than what this does, mm -hmm. and like. Yeah, you can make an enemy stand still in your sticky flames, but they were already in your sticky flames. And for like 90% of the enemies in the game, that means they're already going to die. Yes. And for the remaining enemies that are tanky, like a Praetorian, you would rather have something else besides Tranquilizer rounds yes. to kill them with. I, I think like the main use case of this is like stunning a menace, um, which can be okay. Uh if they're out of range be, of your axes. If you specifically are worried about menaces, then you probably want explosive reload, right? Yes, I, I would agree. Like, usually you want to kill the enemy and not delay their threatening, their their threat for, like, six seconds, after which they go back to shooting you because your gun doesn't kill things anymore. Um, I think this overclock is really bad. But it also, like, I, has the weird, like, sometimes it does something. I don't uh, think it's re I I don't think it's... I personally would not put it in worse than nothing, but it's also weird to put it in equivalent to base because it yes. is doing something different. Yeah, and I think that thing is, is like weaker, generally. Um, but it's weaker than the Zabata, which is like, is zero less than zero? Who knows? Um, I'm going to put it here. It's like, it's it's the Zabata. I don't, yeah, I don't, it's not I don't doing want to talk the same about it thing anymore. as base. It's not doing the same thing as base, but the value it gives is roughly similar to base, so sure. Which is very little. Anyways, no more Sabata talk. On to real guns. Uh, the experimental plasma charger. I think my view of this gun is entirely shaped by 
the tier five mod then containment field. Uh, I think if you're like if your goal is to win as much as possible on hard difficulties, that should be the way you view this gun as well. Um, that being said, there are some fun things you can do with Burning Nightmare with like heavy hitter. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But I think largely our discussion will revolve around thin containment field because it's just like by and far away the best option for yeah. this gun. And thin containment like field, like ten times over, should scale with your charge shot radius and damage. That it yes. doesn't invalidate so many mods completely and makes some overclocks really not make sense either. It's mm -hmm. uh, it's very stupid. It's very yeah. very stupid. I it, it, I need to make like a like a wish list video at some point because there's so much stuff that like like thin containment field and like RJ250 and heat radiance and cold radiance that like completely shafts a gun's build potential because there are just like clear best options that interact with the black box that does the strongest thing the gun does. Um, there are I, I think this is like definitely the the worst one. Because like yeah, I would agree. I mean, I like using the containment field. I think it is fun and useful. It also is like so far and away better than everything else that the gun does. That it's like even I think even if you're playing in like a fairly casual context, it's like it makes it feel bad to use other stuff. Yeah, yeah. Especially like going from the containment field to burning nightmare, and you use in containment field, and it deals two forty damage in a huge AOE. And then you like go to Burning Nightmare and shoot with it, and it does no damage because you're used to the plasma ball of death that kills everything in it. It just it yeah. just feels rough. coincidentally, uh, Burning Nightmare is like as a mod, it makes more sense than the old flying, flying nightmare, nightmare in yeah, general. Plasma burn, but I liked plasma burn more because I could run plasma burn and then run like a charge shot damage build which is not good, but it was fun to use plasma burn normal shots to thermal shock frozen enemies that are like guards or smaller, mm -hmm. and then use charge shots for the frozen damage modifier against big things like frozen Praetorians. That's yeah. not a good gimmick, but it was a fun gimmick, and it doesn't exist anymore. And, and in exchange, we have Plasma Splash, the yeah, plasma greatest splash mod. Is of all time. This, that's not a mod where there's like a split between players who are more tryhard and players who aren't. Nobody likes Plasma Splash. Nobody likes Plasma Splash. It does nothing. Like, I, I don't know what they're thinking when they made that and mod. And again, again, Burning Nightmare makes more sense than Flying Nightmare. Mm -hmm. But I never used Flying Nightmare, so I don't care. Because it was bad. Anyways, uh, energy rounding. <laughs> this one makes you charge your shots a little faster. It gives you a little more ammo. It's like 1.5 times charge speed and 16 ammo. Um, it makes you a little more ammo efficient at TCFing. It's not like a huge buff, but it makes the strongest thing the gun does a little stronger. Um, and it makes it a little faster. Uh, and it also lets you, if you're into this, uh, take the tier 3 charge shot efficiency mod, which makes you a lot better, uh, or makes you a lot more ammo efficient at it, using TCF. Yeah does let you do that but in it's my not, personal opinion yeah. you should always take tier three charge speed because the charge shot time is so slow without it even yes. when you have overclocks that make it faster like this or heat pipe yeah i would tend to agree um i think it's like a decent overclock i think the charge speed upside is is pretty noticeable um and the extra ammo doesn't hurt it's fine yeah it's fine um it's making a very strong base weapon like a bit stronger uh and like if you look at the other epc overclocks it's like the second best or depending on your build it's like the second or third best um i think it's like a like a high c low b it's the minimal clips of epc it's yeah. fine it's fine i'll put it in b for now. Magnetic uh, cooling unit is also fine, except it's less fine. Yeah, it's less fine. It's a, it's fine. Uh, you get to hold your charge shot a little more, or you get to shoot more if you want. The cooling rate is almost like never uh, useful. It's fine. Um, next we have heat pipe. 
this one makes your charge shots more ammo efficient and it makes you have 1.3 times charge speed i believe um but you have like double heat generation all around it's the heat generation makes it extremely difficult to chain shots together with this thing um if your goal in using tcf is to do nothing but mine an ore vein every five seconds then cool good for you um still use energy rerouting because it's more convenient uh heat pipe is really bad for combat it completely kills the gun's combat potential uh aside from like the occasional micara swarm that takes one tcf to kill um i think it's worse than nothing the ammo efficiency is kind of nice but it's really hard to take advantage of that when your gun overheats every second shot yeah i think it's in the bottom tier I think it's not that bad, but I do think it's definitely not very good. I I mean, the better ammo efficiency doesn't matter much because for what TCF does, you get to use it a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. Mm -hmm. So you don't really need it to be more ammo efficient. I do think... Well, this is kind of going in the other direction. We should consider has six times two, but if we're also considering has five, I think on has five, most players are only like really using one TCF shot at a time and they're not doing them back to back. In which case, this is like totally reasonable. I can just sort of understand that, but even if you're like the type of player who pulls it out and TCFs once uh, because it kills everything for you. Like, the upside is still not important at all. Uh, no. And the downside saying, is like, still that you lose a lot of flexibility. I think if, you're like... you, if you use it in that way, I think it's, like, equivalent to base, basically. Uh -huh. If you want to TCF multiple times... I think you cut out there? Matt. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Sorry, when did I cut out? You... Cut out right after you said if you want to use it like base, it's approximately if, equivalent. If you want to use it like that, it's approximately equivalent to base. If you want to use multiple TCF shots back to back, it's worse than nothing because it prevents you from doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's I think it's here, because like even in the best case scenario, it's like it's it's probably like the same thing. Yes. Yeah. As, as nothing. Um heavy hitter. This one's a little weird because typically you build like everything on TCF around uh or everything on the EPC. I said TCF because that's how I think of the gun. Um around the tier five mod TCF. Uh, and heavy hitters minus ammo downside doesn't seem to facilitate that, but it gives you a lot more direct damage, and that can actually be pretty nice with cryo. Um because if you with... want to use direct damage EPC, this is like obviously the thing you take, mm -hmm. and it's fine in that niche. I think, again, it's a it's a fun option. It's mm -hmm. not nearly as bad as some of the other fun options we covered, being face melter, flow rate expansion, glue <laughs> uh -huh. bomber, special sludge blast. Uh -huh. This one is like I would call this a C tier. Yeah, I, I would agree. It has like a niche if you're running cryo. Um, it can be nice uh, if you want to like take neurotoxin and kill tank your enemies with. So as like by yourself still um but generally it's not amazing uh, it can be really convenient in like pubbing situations where you're not dealing with too many enemies and like you want to have a little bit of an easier time killing the one web spitter on the ceiling um but yeah in a I, typical I... like low as has five you can just like run this with burning nightmare shoot bugs and set them on fire it's fine yeah it's fine um, uh, maybe I, I, I can see it being in B, but, uh, I, I think it's really not worth taking if you're not running cryo, and it's also, like, it doesn't limit your TCF effectiveness a bit. Um, overcharger next. I feel like, in an ideal world where TCF scales with, like, anything, um, overcharger would be okay, but it doesn't. TCF is just a black box. It doesn't interact with anything except ammo. Um, and overcharger just makes it consume more ammo and produce more heat. If thin containment no field, if thin containment field scaled based off of a 
your charge shot damage and radius, that would not only be a nerf to thin containment field that it needs, but also it would mean that Overcharger could let you have a huge and more powerful thin containment field blast for yeah. less ammo, which would yeah. be fun. That would be a lot of fun. And it also, it also wouldn't be terrible, I think. Like, it's what, 1.5 yeah. times damage? Which is a lot more damage, or it would be for DCF. Yeah, um, I mean, depending on whatever damage numbers that hypothetical would end up having, yeah. it would probably be good against a lot of enemies. But that's yeah. not the world we live in. As it is, Overcharger kind of doesn't have a use case. It's like, sort of okay with Burning Nightmare. Just like it was sort of okay with Flying Nightmare. But, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. Burning Nightmare is, is not the containment field, unfortunately. It's worth a, worse than nothing. Um, Persistent Plasma next. This one was actually slept on by the modded community for a while, but uh, after season 1, season 2 hit, uh, and bots started being a thing, uh, people were taking them for shredders, and we've realized that it is really good. Um, it leaves behind a plasma field thing in a 3 meter radius uh, that deals a decent amount of damage. It's like it almost deals double uh, an extra two forty damage. Yeah, it's it's it? basically another. I think it's it's a bit more if enemies stay in it the whole time, especially yeah. if it's multiple enemies. Like it's and it also slows them. Um, it's a lot of damage, and, and it lasts for a long time too. It's a lot of damage. It lasts for a long time. It's basically when you use this with the containment field in the air, you create like a force field that flying enemies can't enter or they die. Yeah. Um, small enemies in particular, NATO sites and shredders just die instantly. Yes. So if you've got enemies like that harassing you, you just use this and then stand yeah. near it and they can't get close to you. Yeah. They just and die. In conjunction with the flamethrower or disperser compound, it's also really, really good because you like you shoot out your TCF when guards or better uh or praetorians are pushing you and you chuck down the enemies and it leaves behind a field that prevents any further enemies from getting too far in because yeah. it deals extra damage and slows them down. They're standing it's in the It's like 35 frame. damage per second. It's like a, a considerable yeah. amount of extra dot. And like, it, it should be said, this is basically a clean. Because again, yes. Thin Containment Field does not care about your charge shot damage. Yes. <laughs> and the only downside this has is it lowers your charge shot damage. So if yeah. you use this with Thin Containment Field, it has no downside. Yes. I, I think this is like... This is this, this is, is the first S tier we yeah, have. Yeah, I, I would agree. It's insane. It has no downside. It has a, a ridiculous upside. I don't know why it deals so much damage. Even if it did, like, half the damage it does right now, it would still clean up all native sites, clean up swarmers, the slow is still powerful, uh, and it's still TCF, like... I would say that it's theoretically balanced around the lower charge shot damage. The thing is, it's minus 15 of direct and area charge shot damage. And then so 250 like after total one damage. Second, yes. After one second, it would already have done more damage than you lost. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this ever. I don't know what's going on with the gun in general. Like, why is Plasma Splash still there? Who knows? Okay, next. Uh, the Clutter Wave Cooker. This is one of those guns that is really weird build wise because the whole gun is like defined around the black boxes that are the tier 5 mods. Um, uh, and Blood Wave Cooker has two good overclocks and one okay overclock. We'll see if yeah. we agree on them. We probably do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I would, I would, I would expect so. Um, first one, liquid cooling system. Um, you cool your gun a little faster. You generate a little less heat, and you overheat for a shorter time. I think they're all like very small amounts, and overheating is not like. A big problem on the wave cooker minus 10 percent. well um uh, overheating is a big problem on the wave cooker but this is only minus 10 percent yeah. generation yeah uh it's like it's like the same thing as nothing um super focus lens <laughs> you do more damage if you're really close to an enemy um it's a 50 percent boost but the gun's base damage is low you don't care about the gun's base damage so much and it's within four meters, which yes. in Deep Rock Galactic is, like, borderline enemy melee range. Yes, and, like, also the range of your heat radiance and cold radiance are that large, so pulling out your wave cooker to, like, deal a little more damage to the grunts uh, is just a stupid this idea. One, this one also goes in the funny green tier. Yeah. 
Um, and then the next one also goes in the funny green tier. Yeah. Doesn't do anything. It Diffusion, technically does well, something, but like... Diffusion Ray is... Yeah. It's actually like, I found it okay with uh, like Boiler Ray and Cryo. Um, but the, the rate of fire downside is a little funky uh because it does it have a rate of fire wait no downside? no no i thought i had a damage downside yeah dam damage i'm i'm like i'm tripping i'm looking at the next overclock um the damage downside is is a little weird because with cryo it's like the only time you really care about damage um and i don't think it's i don't think it's terrible i think this is like it honestly like might better than be the last two we just talked yeah. about uh and it has some applications I, I feel like it's i feel like it's a little better than nothing you can put it in C if you want. I think it's like, if it's there, it's barely edging into there. Yeah. I wouldn't disagree. It also has like a, a secret move speed debuff, doesn't it? Does it? I don't remember. Okay, whatever. If, it, if it's well, yeah, there, it, does, it slows doesn't enemy move speed by a bit. Okay. It's But it's one of those ones where like the move speed debuff doesn't last long. So it's yeah. basically only as long as you're holding down. Mm hmm. Uh, and like next. You, you already have densification ray if you really want that, so whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, next, mega power supply. You get a hundred more ammo, uh, and you get three rate of fire in exchange for fifty percent of your cooling rate and a bit more overheat time. I think um, the yeah. downsides are, are the upsides. Sorry, the upsides are really really big. Uh, three rate of fire is is a lot of rate of fire. It like it's nearly fifty percent more rate of fire. Um, and on a, on a gun that has tier 5 exothermic reactor, which is proc-based and chance-based, that feels really good. Um, and the extra ammo is, as I've said before, just it's just a lot of ammo. Um, the overheat downside is a real downside, however. Um, yeah, just, with... just take tier 2 C and yeah. fire in bursts. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's like, for the wave cooker, if this was on another gun, it would be fucking nuts. Like... That that rate of fire boost is crazy, but the wave cooker is just not that good of a gun at base. Um, I think it's like a B tier, probably. Um, as the gun, I don't I don't like seeing it next to this like this TCF overclock, but as an overclock, it's it's very strong. Yeah, I mean it's it's giving you like if you're taking ammo, it's giving you plus twenty five percent more more ammo. If you're taking damage, it's taking you. It's giving you like plus a a third more ammo. Yeah, it, it's, it's a lot of a ammo, lot of number fire it's rate. Like, it's pretty amazing that like despite this overclock being as like numbers wise as ridiculous as it is, like the wave cooker is still not that good. Like yeah, even unless you this... have to clear like a billion NATO sites spread yes. around a huge cave, then you then it's better than everything else. In, but that is in most other circumstances, not so much. Yeah, I mean if you're playing like some ph difficulty with 20 breeders on the map at all times sure take it uh but yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're just... playing meme modded difficulties that give you a billion tiny flying enemies yeah yeah um next blistering necrosis um it's the one... other good one yes the other good one this the downside for this is just like a bit of heat i believe um Wait. it's like you generate a bit I have more. to be real with you here. I don't 100% know how the blisters work currently because they've changed so many times. I, don't think I already have multiple videos detailing <laughs> how they work, and I'm still not sure how they work right now because they might have changed again. Uh, but, but you do more damage when you shoot the blisters. Yes. Which is pretty true. nice. And when they pop, it deals a little more damage. Um, yeah. It's like it has no downside. Uh, or the, the downside is not very significant. Uh, I hate that the blisters are only a 10% chance to apply. It feels really bad, like, shooting a prate for two full overheats and just getting no blisters because... Yeah, you you can you usually don't get screwed, but sometimes you get screwed and so yeah. Um, this and Contagion Transmitter should not be 10% chances. They should either be a higher chance or they should be, like, after you hit the enemy, I don't know, X yeah. number of times, whatever that number may be, they should be guaranteed to apply. But yeah. anyway... It, or it's it should be good. some like pseudo randomness. It should like it should yeah. increase in chance. Uh, but anyways, yeah, it's not it's, like no downside. The upside is pretty strong. It can be nice uh, if you're like using cryo with it, or if you're just trying to kill a yeah. specific tanky enemy. It's like because the blisters are small and like they appear in a kind of non-reliable way. It's hard to coordinate hitting them. But like if you've got someone who's already shooting the enemy. 
um, and they're watching for them, or they just happen to be shooting at the same spot, sometimes they can do a ton of damage by hitting the blisters. And mm -hmm. it's always like at least some extra damage. Yeah. So it's it's all around pretty good. Yeah, it's also pretty fun. I feel like shooting with blisters is like some some primal. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> next gamma contamination. It's like it's okay. I like this more than I should. It's held back by a couple of things. I think gamma contamination. I don't think it should have the minus shot width, but uh -huh. I like running it with... Uh, tier 1C. Yeah, Tier 1C, mm -hmm. and irradiating a lot of stuff. The only other thing that's, like, I think notably bad about this is that it can't apply the debuff through heavy armor, mm -hmm. and you don't, like, due to the weird hit registration, hitting a heavily armored enemy on unarmored bits can be kind of yes, awkward. Yeah. But I do like getting enemies to have a lot of damage over time stacks. Um, and, you know, it's... I it's guess okay. regardless of context, it's always going to be better than a base. Well, maybe, maybe you can't say always going to be better, because, mm -hmm. like, it, it has a downside, down. but yeah, it is, it is better down. overall than Wave Cooker is normally. Yeah, I would agree. I, I think, like, the main thing with this overclock is that a lot of the time it's a win more overclock. Like, you see people, like, taking tier 5a with this and taking a sludge pump and like corroding and then neurotoxining and then radi irradiating the enemy which is like a thing that is useful against approximately two enemies in the game um but it's it's also like just a bit better than base wave cooker overall i think it feels really bad because it's another chance based thing on a gun that has a million chance based things and one of my yeah, main at least, at least this one's 25% yeah. chance not 10%. Yeah. Um so yeah, it's like C tier. It's like it's okay, I guess. It's a little a little better than diffusion, right? I... Sometimes. Yeah. Um next, we move on to engineer. Uh we have the warthog. Now, you recently did a video on this. So I assume Things will be fresh in your mind. Recently, by my standards, yeah. Yeah, by your standards. Um, first, we have Stunner. I think Stunner is really slept on. Um, the number next to it, 30% extra damage on stun enemies, is a big number for a clean network walk. Um, and the like the guaranteed stun chance, regardless of whether you're hitting a weak point or not, is really nice, especially for stuff like Menaces, where you don't always have the best angle and you're using a shotgun that doesn't always hit all its pellets. Um, Stunner is is really nice safety. You get a little bit uh, more consistency versus slashers and guards and uh, a pretty sizable DPS increase a lot of the time. It's like it's I think it's very strong overall. Yeah, I mean I I like magnetic pellet alignment more, mm -hmm. but a lot of that is like feel based. And mm -hmm. I think I think right off the bat I would say that stunner and magnetic pellet alignment are uh warthog's two best overclocks i used to like cycle overload more than i do now but it's kind mm -hmm. of limited um and yeah like i i don't know if i would necessarily put either of them over the other mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense uh it's actually pretty split between starter and mpa in uh top level circles in modded difficulties at least um which is not what you'd expect i feel like like, logically, MPA would be kind of more synergistic with NG's role as just, like, dealing big DPS, but Stunner actually provides so much safety. Uh, and it also does, like, turret whip the same amount as the other one. Um, I feel like it's, like, it's, like, high B or low A. Um, I think part of the reason why I'm hesitant to put it in A is because the other A tier overclocks are, like, on driller primaries. And this is not an entry primary, but I think Stunner is like one of the best options for engineer engineer's primary slot. So I'm kind of inclined to put it into A. If you want my opinion, I would put both Stunner and MPA in A. Okay, yeah, I I don't disagree. Um, Lightweight magazines, you just get a bit more ammo uh, and a little bit less reload time. It's it's pretty good. Uh, this this is a C tier overclock, but yeah. We should put it in 
B as part of my ongoing propaganda campaign to get everyone to use this instead That's of mini, mini shells. That makes a lot yeah. of sense, you know? I like your words. Uh, I'll <laughs> put it in B. Like, the extra ammo isn't huge, but if you're a more casual player who isn't, like, the best about target management and about using your secondary super efficiently, um, it can be, like, nice taking this with your new ammo and just, like, shooting everything. Uh, and that also has no downsides, so... Yeah. Yeah, like, if you just take this and take the ammo up, and you will have not much less ammo than you would with many shells, except you're able to stun enemies, and your damage per shot is higher. Mm -hmm. It's very nice. <laughs> yes. It's, it's not, like, optimal, but if you want to have a lot of ammo on the Warthog, this is the thing that you should be taking, even though it doesn't give you quite as much ammo as another option. <laughs> we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> magnetic pellet alignment. We talked a little bit about this earlier. Uh, it makes your single shot do a lot more damage. You're you have like five, half the base spread, though that isn't quite accurate because of funky spread mechanics. Um, you Ooh, got a thirty percent yeah. point bonus. Yes, go see the lazy maybe video for that. Um, in exchange, you have twenty five percent less rate of fire, but you get a lot more DPS on weak points. Um, I think this is a really good feeling. I like it this in terms of This is the king of, of like, game feel on Warthog. Yes. Because yeah. you just, like, you shoot at the enemies and they die in one shot, and that feels really, really good. Um, it also, practically speaking, it doesn't impact turret whip at all, uh, which is, like, one of the strongest things that the Warthog does. Um... The rate of fire downside is actually something you feel a decent amount, uh, but I think it's 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 generally very good overclock. Uh, it also gets makes you a lot more effective against Mactera, which are a enemy type that NG wants to worry about a lot. Yeah, you can. I mean, if you're at like kind of a medium-ish range, you can one shot uh, spawn and two shot try draws, mm -hmm. um, and you. I mean, at, at any given range, you will kill Mactera with this faster and more consistently uh, than any other Warthog, Warthog setup. So yeah, that's a pretty good upside for this. I would. Uh, cycle overload, kind of the opposite. It gives you one more damage per pellet, which is not negligible at all. It takes you from eight to nine, um, and it also gives you two rate of fire, which is actually a lot of rate of fire for the Warthog. But in exchange. Yeah, the, the... The rate of fire upside is very big. Yes, it's 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 huge. Uh, but in exchange, you have a larger base spread, like 1.5 times, I believe, uh, and a bit more reload time. Um, uh, yeah, I don't... I have to say I don't notice the reload time much, but you, yes. you the increased spread is pretty is very bad. Yeah, you notice it a lot, uh, especially because it's a shotgun that has, like, inherently random patterns uh you you get yeah. a pretty sizable uh effective range decrease with this um, like part of my like for magnetic pedal alignment is i like it when video games actually let you use a shotgun at medium range mm -hmm. and mpa lets you do that this is going in the other direction mm -hmm. um the like you you can get very big dps with it for a short burst which is nice but it like you're pretty limited in the targets you can use it well on. Yes, yeah, I would agree. Um, I think this is like a beater overclock. I don't, I like, I think in terms of how much it improves the base weapon, it it's like it might be a, like a C, honestly. It's like low B, high C. Yeah, but putting it below lightweight mags like doesn't doesn't feel right to me because I hate ammo overclocks. Um. And also, it's like it's pretty fun to use, uh, and it deals big single target damage. And I feel like if you're a has five player, the relevant target pool that it doesn't deal with as well as like nothing uh, is not too pressing. Um, you're not getting jump scared by groups of try draws as frequently on has five. Yes. So, yeah, I, I think it's like a yeah B tier. I'll put it in B tier. Um, next, oh boy, mini shells. Uh, this one, like, 
gives you 80 max ammo, I want to say, or something just shy of 80. Um, gives you six uh, extra magazine size. Yeah, it's 78. Okay. Uh, and halves your recoil. Uh, but you get minus two damage per pellet, and you can no longer stun at anything. Um, I have a bit more info about this in my previous video. I think it's really bad, uh, because the Warthog doesn't typically run into too many ammo problems. Uh, and with this, if you're taking tier two pellets, you're about breaking even in terms of damage as tier one ammo compared to like no overclock at all. It's a bit worse. Uh, in terms of burst, it's a bit better in terms of sustain because of your extra max size. Um, but the lack of stun really, really hurts. Uh, Engineer typically uh, has struggles with survivability in the first place, um, at least when you can't kill every enemy in front of you. Uh, but if you can kill every enemy in front of you, it's like, why are you even really talking about optimization too much? Um, and because of that, like not having stun means a slasher will just run up to you and you just die to it a lot more often. Uh, that Shrydra in the air will just get the shot off a lot more often. The Menace, you have no way to stop it until you whip out your secondary and lob your like breach cutter shot that takes five seconds to travel to it and stun it. Um, yeah, the lack of stun is just is so damning and um, it doesn't even take, uh, take advantage of tier 5 turret whip any better because you never run out of ammo turret whipping with Warthog. Yeah, I mean, I care more about the reduced consistency in one-shotting enemies and less about the stun, but they're both bad downsides, and, like, we both don't like this overclock, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> the yes, exact yes, specifics. yes. <laughs> the, the thing that I want to, like, kind of hammer in here, people so, so frequently talk about turret whip with this overclock. Yeah. This overclock does not synergize with turret whip because the ammo cost of shooting turrets with your warthog is meaningless you are yeah. never going to run out of warthog ammo because you're shooting yeah. your turrets you're never going to not be able to turret whip something because of your warthog ammo unless you're yeah. trying to do that on purpose it's like a on paper it's technically a synergy in practice it does not matter at all i think in practice it's an anti-synergy because if you're using turret whip already you're getting a ton of ammo efficiency value out of that yeah, and so like, you don't need you don't need to have a huge ammo pool yes. on your gun because you're already you already have improved ammo efficiency. Yeah. And then the That's enemies that make it through the turret whip, you're you're all of a sudden you're like god awful at killing them. Uh because you have the way less burst DPS and you can't stun them. Uh, and they just push and push and push and you're sad and you die. Uh I think it's worse than nothing. Yeah. I think it is it is fine to take this for chill games, if you're doing something that's hard, whether it's like a particularly messed up seed or mutator combo, or you're playing like uh, you're playing modded difficulties, you do not want to equip this yes. overclock. I think like the one situation in which I have taken this overclock and not felt awful about it is pairing it with Fat Boy, because like with Fat Boy you have no secondary, uh, so you might as well like remove your primary as well. But I digress. Um, <laughs> but what if instead you just took MPA and took the ammo mod? Hmm. What if you just did that instead? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But like having two like unstables is kind of stylish, you know? Anyways, <laughs> enough to talk about mini shells. It's a bad overclock. I don't like it. Moving on. Um, we have the stubby now. The stubby overclock list is, is very sad. Um, I think in part it's because... The stubby is not good, but I also, think the it's... stubby is okay. But it's it is it is an overclock dependent gun, and the gun has two, two good, overclocks. good overclocks. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll start with super similar rounds. Um, rounds. Uh, this is a five magazine size buff, uh, and you get a little bit more accuracy, I believe. Um, yeah, the, the accuracy is, uh, it's not, it doesn't matter as much as it looks from the stats. It You don't feel it very hmm. much. I believe you have a video on that, don't you? I'll link it in the, in the corner. I mean, I have, I have a little video where I'm just shooting a wall with these, hmm. with the different uh, spread mods on this. Yeah, but... uh, the mag size is like, it's, it's fine, but it's not a huge mag size increase uh, on a gun that 
has a very short reload. Uh, so it's it's not super amazing. It's like on a gun that had more effect, I feel like this could be argued to be a C tier overclock, but stubby at base is just so eh that yeah, I feel like it's basically the same. Thoughts? Are you a super yeah, slim guy? It's, it's whatever. In particular. It's whatever. Won't defend it to your last breath? Okay. <laughs> uh, well oiled machine. This is a plus two rate of fire. And I believe a reload buff, but as I said yeah, you, before. I think I think plus two rate of fire, you could this could eke it out into C, but it is it is a worse version of uh what's coming up in a couple. Yes, in in the the, the very next one. Uh I could see it in C, but at the same time, the effectiveness boost that it gives to the stubby is not that great. If you're like building stubby to spread electricity, that rate of fire boost doesn't even matter because you just need to proc once, uh, and stubby procs at more than enough usually, I find. Um, and it's also not a huge rate of fire boost. It's like a little less than 20%, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I mean, it's half the rate of fire boost that EM refire booster gives. Yeah. So. Oh, so it's, it's plus two. Okay. Uh, yeah. I feel like it's... I, I could see it being a C, but it's also just the base stubby. Like, I would not care if I got this. I would never use it. I would never equip it. Unless it was, like, my over only overclock. And I was forced into the stubby for whatever reason. Yeah, well, I mean, that's kind of true of uh, some of the other stuff in C, too. Yeah. That's Like, that's sticky true. additive. Yeah. Wait, so you added it as below C. Lighter tanks and like hydrogen. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lighter tanks up there. <laughs> Still, uh, you get what I mean. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I can see this being in C. But at the same time, it's a stubby overclock. You know what? Who cares? You're not going to defend it, I feel like. Like, are you a well like, really oiled machine enjoyer in particular? No, nobody, nobody who has EM refire booster uh, equips well oiled machine. The thing yeah. is, though, if you. Uh, I think that it sh in a vacuum, like, it would only be down in a prox equivalent to base, in my opinion, if EM Refire Booster uh, exists. If EM Refire Booster, like, you don't have it or it doesn't exist, it can go up to C. I, I could see that. However, it's a semi overclock, and I don't like it, so I'm keeping it there. Um, <laughs> EM Refire Booster next. We've been talking about it a while for a while. It's like one of two good overclocks that the Stubby has. Um, it's a very sizable DPS increase. Um, you get plus four rate of fire. rate of fire boost. Yes. And it's a noticeable yeah. direct damage boost. It's like a and the downside is not that big boost. of a deal. It's a bit more than twenty yeah. percent, I believe, or it's plus two rather. Yeah, if you well, it's less if you're taking damage up mods, which you probably want to. Yeah. But like it's it's still it, it's still a pretty good amount. Um, Plus two for the stubby is noticeable. It's mm -hmm. electric damage, which is better against some enemies, and uh, and worse against some enemies. But basically, just oppressors. Yeah. Uh, it, it, the plus two damage mod is actually like equivalent to taking another damage mod. Uh, and and yeah. in any case, it deals actually pretty good damage. Um, like taking this and. Dumping it into a breeder weak point feels really good. Uh, deals pretty good Praetorian damage. Yeah. Um, it... When you equip this mod, it's like Stubby versus Warthog makes more sense now because mm -hmm. it's like this has a bit more effective range and a bit less burst damage than Warthog, and it's a fine yeah. trade off when you yeah. have this overclock equipped. Yeah. Uh, I think this should be like the base weapon, honestly, but it's pretty good. I don't think it's amazing because it tends to run into ammo issues. Um, and at least if you build it for single target damage, if you build it for like frag control, it's 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 not very good at all, uh, with like two one two 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 or something. Or uh... yeah, well that's because uh, Stubby's electric crowd control builds aren't very good in yes, the first place. I would agree. It, I feel like Stubby's they... electric effect doesn't do damage. Yeah, it should. I, it it should does do like damage. half a grunt's health or whatever. Yeah, um, it's like I feel like it's like a B tier overclock. Uh, I don't think it's quite. Yeah. I'm not as happy taking it as like these two, but it's like it's the stubby equivalent to cycle like overload. I feel. Um, lightweight rounds. I can't even remember what this shit does. It's like some really big 
max ammo increase? Let me search this up. <laughs> it's a kind of big max ammo boost, but it lowers your damage and rate of fire, and you shouldn't equip this. Yeah, yes. Uh, yeah, I would agree. Like, the, the rate of fire boost, or the rate of fire downside is, is really big. You can feel it. Uh, it's like the... This is cause, not a weapon that you yes. want these modifiers on. Yes, because Stubby is either like trying to proc electricity, uh, even if you build it for single target, because you can th take the electricity uh, boost mod, or it's trying to deal a lot of single target. You are not taking Stubby to kill a grunt sometimes. If you were doing that, you would just take Warthog and like one-shot them in the face. And you're staring at grunts repeatedly, like one or two bullets at a time, to try to get your random chance electricity to proc, and then when it procs, it doesn't do very much damage, is depressing. <laughs> yes. And that's the only thing that this overclock is <laughs> at all about. Yeah. I'm hesitant to say it's like worse than nothing, because I'll be honest, I don't have a ton of experience with this overclock. Uh, I, I think it's worse than nothing. I don't like think about it. Um, it's an ammo overclock. I hate ammo overclocks. It's worse than nothing. Okay. Next. Some ammo overclocks are good, despite your dislike. This isn't <laughs> one of them. Mm, yeah, sure. Anyways. <laughs> Lightweight cases on the breach cutter is good, and you can't tell me otherwise. <laughs> like, it's, like, fine. It's better than nothing. Uh, anyway. Turnark. This is, like... It's honestly almost worse than nothing. I feel like a lot of the time, using the effect of the of the overclock is actively bad because this is a strictly worse version of EM discharge. Yes, um, and also it it takes like a surprisingly a long time to proc it for whatever reason. I don't know why. It just feels like I think it's partially because well, of the rate of fire down. Um, yeah, but also you have to proc it on two turrets. Two. Yes, and it like EM discharge. They both have downsides that make your direct damage worse. Like, EM mm -hmm. Discharge lowers your direct damage and magazine size by a bit. Yeah. This one lowers your rate of fire, which is arguably worse. Yeah, I would agree. And also, this one comes with a, this one comes with a big max ammo down. And I don't know yeah. why, because it's wor the effect it gives you is worse than worse. EM Discharge. I, I think like, the effect is, is, is actively bad, honestly, because it lasts for, like, it lasts for too long. You don't want to have an entire like line of electricity stopping you from moving at all for twenty seconds. Um, it also like tends to hold Praetorians at the exact range in which it's awkward to go up to them and shoot them, uh, but they can still like spit at you if you're like if you're putting your turrets in a place where you can refill them. Uh, and then if you want to take advantage of this, you have to build both of your turrets, activate it on both of them. And then your turrets are, like, out there, and there's a million grunts around them, and you can't even refill them. Um, I don't think that, like, I don't think that it lasting as long as it does is a, is a bad thing. I just think that, like, the turret arcs aren't strong enough to justify what this does. Like, EM Discharge just kills things in a radius. Yeah. This doesn't. But, and also it's competing with, like, you know, the engineer being the guy who has repellent and proxy mines and turret EM Discharge and turret whip. Yeah. And... Like, you have other sources of like AOE uh -huh. that are better for this. For EM discharge, you can make a case for it. For this, like the the longer setup time and weaker effect, it's like makes it exponentially worse. Yes, I, I think it's like a lot of the time. Honestly, even most of the time, it's just not worth using. Um, and it also has that does that thing where if you try to take it into a pub, like your teammates just kill the enemies before they walk into your. Painfully yeah, this, thought this out. Is another, this is another rare instance where people saying dot effects are bad, just shoot the bugs, are actually right. Because it's this, this dot it's effect so is bad. weak yeah. and slow enough. Yeah. I think it's, like, I, I'm debating between these two, two tiers, but I, I feel like saying it's worse than nothing is kind it's, of... It's probably more fair to put it in a prox equivalent to base, even yeah. though I hate it. Yeah. I, 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 pr I probably tend to agree, yeah. Um, next, Tardium Discharge. We've been talking about this a lot. Um, this one creates a like a huge AoE field around your turrets when you shoot them. It's like and end of fear effect, and it deals a lot of damage um, in exchange for a little bit less magazine size and a little bit less direct damage. Uh, 
the direct damage isn't a huge deal because this thing does a lot of damage. Um, and it's also very spammable. Like you can basically proc it as fast as you can shoot. Um, and it deals a lot of damage. Uh, for whatever reason, it feels like it deals less damage to the dwarves and to the bugs. Um, I don't know if it has a friendly fire modifier on that effect specifically. Um, I do think the friendly fire is not a big deal yes. on it. And yeah. like, this is, you know, you funnel enemies into it with repellent, and then you murder all of them. And you only, like, occasionally, you without your secondary for when there's tanky yeah. enemies, everything else just dies to it. Mm -hmm. I think like, the big weakness of this is that they nerfed it, one, to where you have to build the turrets, so it has a pretty long setup time. And number two, sometimes like a prate will walk in front of your turret and then you can't proc it anymore. Um, yeah. But the effect is is really, really strong. It's like one of the strongest holding holding tools in the game. Um, yeah, I mean, I that just it's... means you have to either kill or get the prey out of there fairly quickly and like mm -hmm. fairly frequently the praetorian will get feared and move away from it because yeah. of the fear effect it does so yeah it's not that big of a, an issue and like it's just it's the good version of turret arc yeah and and the huge diameter means that it'll hit mech terror too so it just like shuts down everything that's trying to walk through the hole or the choke um i think it's i think it's like eight here i if it was on a gun that was a little more usable at base, I could see it being S tier. If you could have this on the Warthog, this would be S tier. Yes, I, I would. Or the Lock. Yep, I would agree. Um, but like, if you take this, you're just not really using your weapon for anything but clicking on your turrets. Uh, and I feel like before it got nerfed or bug fixed or whatever, uh, it, it's probably S tier. It would probably be S tier because it, it makes the gun so much better. Um, but now that you have to like set them up and before and build them before you can actually activate the effect, it's it's probably nature just because it lacks the flexibility. Um, okay, moving on to the lock one smart rifle next. Um, first is eraser. This one is a pretty big magazine size increase. It's twelve plus mag size uh, and a one third increase to your number of locks, I believe. Um, I think the big increased problem... Increased mag size is nice. Increased max number of lock-ons is a downside. Yes, it's a downside. Because uh, tier 5B benefits from maxing out your locks. Uh, and this does not help with that. Um, it's, it's, it's okay. Like, I think the big problem with this is that the lock is really not great at base. Um, yeah, lock is another gun that cares a lot about overclocks. And it cares and it about two. A couple of two. Over, yeah, again, there are two overclocks that really like change the gun a lot. Mm -hmm. And they're um, like some of the strongest overclocks in the game, honestly. Yeah, and this is not one of them. This is this, is, this is equivalent to base. Yeah, I, I would agree. I mean, like, I could and, see it being in C, but the lock just... You don't really get that much benefit from having more lock in your lock, unless... No, and mag size is a benefit but only barely because you have a good reload cancel and mm -hmm. max number of locks is situationally a downside depending on yes. your build so this is it's it's a wash yeah I an agree. armor break module is, is insane i don't know why this overclock exists <laughs> for anyone who doesn't know the lock already has a built-in armor break modifier you yeah. already do 50 percent more damage to armor with the locks yeah. uh lock on shots and because of that you already have like the armor penetration effect where the shot that breaks armor deals full damage. Yes. Um, Which is nice. So for like the lock, the lock is already good at breaking armor. This is an overclock that only has an effect on full lock. And it gives it like and a thousand percent more, a thousand two hundred fifty. One thousand two hundred and fifty percent armor breaking. <laughs> Why does it do this? <laughs> There's no enemy in the entire game that has armor plates with enough health for that value to make any sense. <laughs> yeah, it could be it way would... smaller than that. It would still break everything instantly. Like, like maybe someone at Ghost Ship just thought Armor Break did more damage to Dreads, and they're like, wow, this is going to be the most overpowered overclock of all time. And then... I mean, maybe I, I don't remember the exact values on, like, Elite Praetorian Armor. It's pretty high. I still feel like that's overkill. For... <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's, I... overkill <laughs> it's overkill for a value that the lock doesn't care about. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know armor. what's going on with this thing. Like... I feel like 
part of me wants to put it in worse than nothing just just out of principle but it's it's yeah it, it's it just is nothing. equivalent to base because it doesn't do anything yeah um next ecr explosive chemical rounds this is one of the two overclocks that the lock wants and it is absolutely insane like i don't know what this thing at, at least in the context of vanilla difficulties um Specifically, because on modded, if, if you're, it's a little if you're weaker. playing like a a pub has five, this is yeah. the easiest way to stop. Yes, I I do not understand like why this overclock is in the game, because it it's just so much return on the effort that you put in. Um, at least for vanilla difficulties, it's like, it's like, it's like double last tier. You just hold M one and then everything explodes, and it also like still does decent prey damage because you have the electricity effect. Um, and you typically take tier 5 or tier 3 a with this um the downsides are the minus 5 direct damage is actually pretty big but the minus ammo does not matter when every like every three of your ammo deals 50 explosive damage and fear um and you get a ton of explosion explosion still it shreds through non-veteran Makera. it sh absolutely shreds through veteran like low veteran count grunt swarms um i i think it's like it's 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 pretty stupid that this is in the vanilla game uh unmodded it's a little bit worse because ng doesn't typically care that much about killing grunts yeah. um and there are more grunts and there are more tanky grunts um i mean on modded this is a on vanilla this is s yes but it's like so s on vanilla that i'm just gonna put it in s um yeah, that's fair <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I don't know what this thing is doing. And it's it hasn't even been touched. Uh, it It's also really good self-defense on NG, which is a thing yeah. that NG cares a lot about. Um, Especially compared Blowing to, like... Yeah. 12 stars with one lock yes. enemy is pretty good. Yeah, it, it's very good. Um, Yeah, next. Seeker rounds. Um, This is... A weird overclock. I don't know how exactly to feel about it because, on one hand, it's it's like very convenient, right? Because you just hold M one and then all the bullets shoot out, and you don't have to think about like aiming or weak points or anything. Well, you have to think about weak points, but like, on the other hand, it makes the gun worse. I think <laughs> if you are a good player, this is worse than nothing. I think if you are either a bad player or just playing in a very lazy way, this is. Fine. I think yes. I think we can split the difference and put this into either C or equivalent to base. Uh -huh. Um but like it should be emphasized that if, if you know what's up, if you're like you know, game sense and mechanics and etc. are like decent or better, this is not a good overclock. Mm -hmm. But this this is a very convenient overclock for just holding down M1 and letting bugs die. Yeah. I would agree. I, I think I think we can split the difference. I like I want to put it down here, but I feel like there's such a large player base that it does actually belong in worse than nothing. Yeah. But it it is we we can call um players with bad mechanics a, a niche for an overclock to exist. That's fine. Yes. Yeah, that's it's okay. Uh and if, you, like... if you really like playing Kirby, you can equip this overclock <laughs> and feel fine about it. <laughs> Uh, next, Executioner. This is another one of the, the really, really good overclocks for the lock. It, like, straight up doubles the lock's effectiveness for no downside, basically. Um, you got 50% weak point damage. I mean, damage. It, it used to literally, it used to literally, literally double yeah. it because it used to give plus 100% weak point damage, which was insanely cracked. It's still insanely good at yeah. plus 50% weak point damage. I don't know what they're thinking with 100%. I, like, how could you like, play with a gun for a second and not realize that one magging, like, five Praetorians is okay. Anyways, I digress. Um, the, it gives you, like, it, it reduces your mag size by 12, um, which is a, a real downside. Um, yeah, and it, it also reduces It's a your... downside. It reduces your max ammo by a bit. It also has, you know... 66% max number of lock-ons, which is actually an upside because mm -hmm. it gets its bonus at max locks. 
And you may also be running tier 5B, which also gets its bonus to max locks. Yes. Having a lower number of max locks means you reach that faster. Yes. Uh, and then it also uh, doubles your, well, lock halves the time it takes yeah. to lock, lock on. Yeah. Which is also, like, one of the best possible things you could get on the luck. So yes. It's uh, easy S tier overclock. Yeah, it, I would it agree. Deletes menaces from across the map. It obliterates any large health target. It's still better than the normal. It's not as good as uh, ECR against like killing some grunts that are right next to you. Mm -hmm. But it's still better it's still than the base gun at doing that. Yeah. And it's amazing against large single targets and priority targets. Yes. It's uh, the... If your team is handling groups of enemies, this is the best thing you can possibly equip on the lock because it's like maybe, maybe the best like single target deleter in the entire game. Yeah, it's up, it's up there with the VB. It has better DPS than VB against oppressors and shellbacks, which is really relevant. And it's also way better than VB at like killing Mactera. Um, like it's the best single target Mactera killer. Like, um. Yeah, the For only time else. that that's yeah. not true is if the Goo Bomber has both of its stacks destroyed. But mm -hmm. um, oh, if the Goo yeah, Bomber VB, has VB its stacks does... destroyed and has more than a little HP, then uh, something went wrong, probably. <laughs> yeah, uh, and VB does one-shot boopers when they're ignited, which is is like a problem. But Executioner also like shreds through goobers, um, Goo Bombers. Uh, yeah, and also it's like really good against Spitballers. It's 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 insane. It has some of the highest single target DPS in the game. I think it's like the second highest after VB. Um, against yeah, and it, it does it at any range points. with perfect, well, near perfect consistency. So it's like yeah, yeah it's the really only good. time you can't delete an enemy with it is if you're in a really, really huge uh, mining mission cave and you can't actually lock on. But in, yeah. any normal cave, you can lock on anywhere. Yeah. Also, there's this like wacky trick where if you take one 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 one, you can like one lock uh, a patrol bot if you hit the weak point um it's it, i yeah i don't know execution is, is insane ridiculous yeah. we, we we can move on it's, yes. it's just this this overclock's insanely good yes um <laughs> near lasso this one is another another very weird one um i feel like for me it's like the same vein as tranquilizer rounds where it kind of kills your gun as a gun but then the effect is like okay sometimes, I guess I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't kill your gun in the way that like seeker rounds does. It's just like your lock on time is a bit slower. The lock yeah. on duration, the lock on duration is limited, but it doesn't matter that much because you're usually shooting not long after a lock. Yeah. Um, that's the, the only lock like, on, so the lock on speed endlessly slow a dread technically, but you mm -hmm. basically still can. Yeah, I, I think it's fine. I, it's okay, but the lock-on speed really hurts because going from executioner to like base lock already feels really bad, and then you get the extra like fifteen percent lock-on speed on top of that, and it's just ugh. the lock-on speed is not good. I think this is, I mean, it's like I think this is kind of lock training wheels overclock because it slows down enemies and makes it easier to hit their weak points. Mm -hmm. You can get a feel for how to aim the lock to hit enemy weak points. Yeah. And then you can graduate to a big boy overclock later. <laughs> and by big boy overclock, you mean executioner. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's like, it, it's fine here. Um, okay, that is it for the primaries on engineer. We're moving on to secondaries, starting with PGL uh, and clean sleep. Um, it, it's okay. Like, the extra AoE is pretty good it's 0.5 meter it's extra um the area damage is a non-consideration because you should build pgl with tier 3 heat and it just ignites all grunts uh and tends to ignite all veterans regardless of area damage um it's okay like it's not amazing but it's just a just a relatively small increase to the effectiveness of the pgl yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this or the next two this overclocks. Or They're almost outcompeted. This, there's a lot of stuff wrong with this, but it's like not. Well, 
it not like, con it's conceptually good. design wise maybe yes. but like in terms of what it does for you yeah. um this one's good anyways we'll get yeah, to it in like sweep is, in sleep is like fine. it's fine um i kind of don't want to talk about these two too much like it gives you yeah just, background. just put them in like ammo. c it's or fine. whatever it gives you two more ammo that's pretty good <laughs> And then yeah, like, combat rounds is like maybe better, but the minus AOE is like yeah, yeah you can put it in like, C as like well. Fine. RG250, I don't know who designed this ever clock. It's just like it's literally strictly better than these two in all situations. Um, okay, almost all situations. Um, it gives you a huge mobility upside, which is like the big thing with this overclock. Um, where you get to jump by shooting the ground beneath you or shooting anything really, it blows away players and blast. Um, but it also gives you 1.7 times max ammo for whatever reason. Uh, supposedly they counteract this by reducing the area damage by 35. But as I said before, PGL doesn't care about area damage because if you take tier three heat, uh, then it just ignites everything. So there's literally no downside to this, taking this overclock if you build the PGL the way you should, which is like 1113x. Uh, in tier four, you can do whatever you want. Um, yeah, I, I I like running uh tier two damage on this sometimes, but yeah, basically, you, I mean, you don't. Uh, it's just good. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's just strictly I have better. sentence ready, but it does, it's just it's just good. You get yeah. a bunch of ammo, which the PGL wants. Mm -hmm. Still kills the same stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's Pretty funny simple. to like blast your whole team out of a shield with this. I have a couple of clips of me doing this. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's like the mobility is also not negligible at all. It uh, lets you do yeah. some really silly stuff. Um, I should say right now, I think like in my PGL video, I said I feel like PGL is in a a pretty nice spot compared to Breach Cutter, and that's basically like I do still think that the thing is that's like. Assuming that you're running the good stuff on PGL and that's in vanilla difficulties. Mm -hmm. If you're running on a higher difficulty, PGL is like noticeably worse. Yes, than I would agree. Cutter. But I feel like in in vanilla but difficulties, you, you, you still can run like RJ250 yes. and have it not like totally terrible on. Yeah, it's actually pretty nice for like too. ranged ignitions. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, and yeah, it's it's decent overall. I think. I feel like in honor of how much better it is than these two shooters, it's like it's like I'm gonna put it in A tier. Yeah, it I think it belongs in A tier. Yeah. Um and I, I think modern that, like, it's like the same shit, but like I don't know. The, the only thing I would say about PGL beyond this is like I think RJ two fifty should stay at its same level of strength and everything else should get better, basically. Yeah. I, I wouldn't um, disagree. Hyperprob is also fine, but like mm -hmm. the I mean the base gun should have I think a bit more ammo and more damage, and then RJ250 should have increased penalties so that it remains the same spot that mm -hmm. it's at now. Yeah, I, I would agree. It's not. A, it's like I don't think it's as strong as these other things in the A tier, but it's it's so much better than the other options on the PGL, and it's also a lot of fun. Like the the rocket jumping gimmick is 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 very very fun to play around with. Yeah, uh, but I'll, but I okay, why? Does the PGL and the platform gun, why do they both have like a mod made for this and they're still not good? Wh who You mean the inertia inhibitor? Yeah, in inertia inhibitor. Who Yeah. Well, I mean like, the, the actual reason is because I I forget if it was an experimental patch or or not, but like originally they made it so that disabled inertia inhibitor was just part of the base gun, and then people said, Hold on a minute, I'm using something that doesn't care about those. I don't like this. And they said, oh, okay. We'll make it a mod so it's an option. <laughs> the problem is, as a mod, it's competing with the other things in the mod tier, so you don't equip it. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I mean, I, some I, people equip I, it on, on RJ250, but not many, and you would never equip it on anything else. Yes. But and then there's a platform gun mod for it as well, and neither of them yeah. are good. Like I, I don't know. Whatever. You, you. That should be like a toggle that's not a mod. It should, there should be like a little toggle off to the side of the mod list, which is the yeah. inertia inhibitor. That's not like design wise, that's not a very like clean solution, mm -hmm. but I do think that that would be like the best yeah. for the gun. Yeah, anyway. I would disagree. Anyways, <laughs> moving Bat on. Boy. Bat boy. Oh boy. Um, 
I think it's really bad. Uh, there are situations in which it is really, really strong, i.e. when you get 12 bad boy shots per resupply, like if everybody's running bad boy, or if you're playing solo and you get to delete 12, like, medium-sized grunt packs per resupply, then that's, like, all the enemies. Um, if you're getting three of them per resupply, as is the case in most cases, it's so limiting on your secondary slot, and it's competing with a lot of things that make you better at surviving and are approximately as good at killing that it's i think it's worse than nothing it just limits your flexibility as a class so much yeah I, you have to consider with fat boy like a lot of what fat boy is doing is it's making the pgl able to be good against targets that pgl isn't normally mm -hmm. um but you also get that by equipping the breach cutter and yes. you can do the equivalent of what Fat Boy does in like two breach cutter shots. Yes. Yeah. I would agree. And without like in anywhere near as much friendly fire concern and without putting a big uh like radiation field that your teammates can't move through. Yes. That being said, it's like kind of absurd if you're in solo, because you can just plat off everything and bundle all the grunts into one place and just spam resupplies and Yeah. It, uh, you can you could also do that with spinning death. Yes. Or like shoot your breach cutter three times or approximate. Yeah. But anyways, I think it's worse than nothing. I think it has a lot of fun value. There's a reason why it's so like highly recommended because if Fat Boy didn't change the sound effect of the explosion, nobody would equip this overclock. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. Honestly, when I got it first, the, the, the crater it leaves behind is not that big. And the explosion is not actually that big either, but it feels so beefy. The explosion um, is only one meter bigger in AoE radius. Yeah, but the, the the radiation field is, like, huge, isn't it? The radiation field is way bigger. The yeah. radiation field is... It's fixed. It's I think it's eight meters yeah. radius. Which is, so, you know, 16 meters from one end to the other. Yeah, very large. But it's it's also kind of a double-edged sword, because you walk through it and you die. Uh, I think it's worse than nothing, personally. I'm gonna place it there. Yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not going to argue you out of that. Yeah. Um next, hyperprop. Hyperpropellant, I feel like this is a pretty overrated overclock. Um it does a lot of things that are really nice, mainly that you pull it out, you shoot once, and you get to go back to your primary. Um but I think the big problem with that is that NG's primaries are generally not very strong outside of this one. It's uh, nice that it's burst damage, but I would always yes. rather equip Overdrive Booster than this. Yes, I think in, in the vast majority of cases. Uh, I, I like it a lot for, like, attention economy. Um, if you're, like, doing a solo with ECR and you want a secondary that you just, like, take yeah, it out I mean, to something and you go back to defending yourself. But... ECR is definitely, like, the best uh, yes. thing you could take this with. Uh, yeah, I feel like that's less... Like the virtues of this overclock and more the virtues of ecr being like you want this gun out at all times hyperprop lets you do that um but against like in most other situations hyperprop is just i think it's just worse than overdrive booster um it, yeah it, it's big burst damage but you're giving up a lot by yeah. making your secondary slot as ng only single target burst yes and you're again running into like with ice spear you're running into the issue where if you shoot a projectile and you hit an enemy uh, at a spot where the projectile is hitting both their weak point and their normal damage uh, hitboxes, it'll do the normal damage. Yes. So if your shot is not like perfectly centered on a warden weak point, you're doing the normal damage. Yeah. Even if like if your shot is like half hitting warden weak point, half hitting its normal flesh, it's just one x damage. Yes. It also really it's, sucks against spitballers. It's, yeah, it's okay. so inconsistent to actually hit spitball or weak point. You can have your your crosshair like almost perfectly lined up on a spitball or weak point. Mm -hmm. um, it's also like very but... sad that you can't you can't even one shot prates with this. Um, and also the the whole armor break thing, uh, where armor break with projectiles, it doesn't like cleave through the armor and deal full damage. Like missing yeah. slightly on a Praetorian and hitting armor and doing no damage as a result just feels really bad. Yeah, you you do like the. I don't know what is it like seventy five damage or yeah whatever the, the AOE you're gonna be doing from AOE yeah less than hundred damage 
That being okay. said, I, I mean, think it's, it's like it's fine. It I is think, fine. I just have gripes. Yes, I think before Overdrive Booster existed, I was like, it's like it's in a pretty good place. Um, and it 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 still is okay. It deals decently. It's not like it's damage. literally. It's not like it has no reason to take over Overdrive Booster mm -hmm. because it is it is more bursty. Yes. Um, you can just shoot it and then switch to something else and let Born Ready reload it. Yeah. But I do think it is overall outcompeted if you want your single target yeah. uh, to be in your secondary slot. Yeah, I, I think it's like a like a B tier overclock. I think yeah. it looks pretty pretty nice along these. And like I I, I want to make it clear that like I'm saying B tier, but these are these are all quite strong. These are not like bad overclocks. Anything C and above is an improvement to the gun. Yes. And, and at, at B, B tier and above is quite a large improvement, honestly. EM Refire Booster is like making those stuff usable. Uh, like we could shift all the all yeah. the tiers you, you down. You can one consider and like C is C is kind of good, B is good, A is great, S, S is, is ridiculous. Yeah, broken. Um, so hyperprop users, don't don't flame me in the comments. It's good. It's just outcompeted. Um, yeah. In any case. That's... It's outcompeted and I don't like the hitbox issues. Yes. GSG, please. Next. Uh, breach Cutter. First we have lightweight cases. We were talking about this a little earlier. Um, yeah, I think this is one of the good ammo mod overclocks. Because I think having having a few more breach cutter shots is fairly impactful. I, the breach cutter shots do a lot. I would not and disagree. I think you can realistically end up in a situation where you're firing enough breach cutter shots that uh, having more is impactful. Yeah, I, I wouldn't disagree. But I think this overclock is really overrated because the plus three is like you get two more per resupply. Um, but you can take other stuff, like stronger stronger plasma current in particular, and you can take tier one mag size pretty comfortably as a result. And then you if you use your magazine, then you're getting more ammo from that. Um if you're just going down like the one 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 two two typical breach cutter setup, lightweight cases is like it's like a, a bit of an improvement over that. But if you're looking to have like breach cutter plus, I feel like stronger plasma current is generally a better option and for each resupply, it gives you a little more ammo, actually. Well, not a little more ammo, but it gives oh, you a let me, you. let me hit you with this one. I normally, with lightweight cases, I'm running uh, the plus mag size, and I pretty really? frequently am also running tier 2 damage. Interesting. I don't think I've ever seen anybody run that, in my circles at least. I don't think that the tier 2 damage is optimal for the record, but I like shredding Praetorians faster, and then lightweight cases just gives me three more shots of it, basically. Yeah, I, okay, that makes sense. Would you like to place this in B? I feel like it should be in C, personally, but... I'm okay with either B or I C would for this. I feel, like, I feel like people like this one a lot more than they should. Um, I would put it in B, it, so if you're asking me to choose, that's where I would put it. Um... But I'm not going to bite your head off if you put it in C. Okay. I, I'm, I'm going to put it in C. I feel like C. Because it's like... It's not... It's not bad by any means. Like, more breach cutter shots is, is, is good. But I think generally as a player, uh, and I think generally most high-level players tend to gravitate towards more output uh, and less sustain. As as the general general heuristic, it's not not consistent across all weapons and all situations. But I feel like the opportunity cost of taking lightweight cases is is pretty big uh, compared to other options. Um, okay, moving on. Stronger plasma current. Uh, I was talking about this a little earlier. It gives you plus five point five seconds projectile lifetime, um, and it gives you like 50 more beam dps um the the dps is honestly ne negligible uh the breach does a lot of dps already and this does not make that significantly better the extra projectile lifetime is pretty nice though um it's like a third of the tier one a mod and it lets you 
uh, forego that for mag size relatively yeah. comfortably. People take this to so that their beam goes farther. Yeah. Um, and so that without taking tier one A, if you're taking tier one A already, then you I don't think it's take a bit this. excessive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as I said, I just normally I normally run the mag size like regardless, but uh, this mm. definitely makes sense to run with mag size. Yeah. Um, and if you're taking tier one mag size, you can take tier two beam, uh, beam width because uh, if if you have extra mag size, you get more per resup, and actually you get the whole additional mag size per resup because if you use all of your um, if you use all of your magazine and you have born ready, which you should have, or not born ready, resupplier, which you should have, um, you get the whole magazine back, right? So the taking tier one mag size is, is actually like a plus three per resup, which if it were purely ammo, it would take five extra ammo, total max ammo pool to reach that. But with mag size, it's uh, you just get plus three per resup if you're using your breach ammo. Um, so you, you get to compensate for not taking tier two ammo as a result, uh, and you can take tier two beam width, uh, which is nice. Um, I think this is like, I think it's a bit stronger than the other cases overall, but I think that's like also partially me as a player and uh, as like someone who plays likes to play fast and plays really hard difficulties, which really reward that sort of burst. Um, I feel like it's like a high C or low B, personally. Um, I would put it in C. Okay. We'll put it there. Um, next, return to center. I talked about this a little before. It's uh, a huge minus six ammo penalty in exchange for allowing you to reverse the direction of your beam if you let go of your uh, mouse one key. It's like, I think the big problem with this one is that it takes a lot of attention to use because to get that benefit, you have to hold down your mouse for as long as you wanted to travel, and then you have to let go of it. And during that duration, you can't shoot any more reach cutter shots. Um, yeah. So it's, it's like it only makes you better against tanky enemies, basically. Yes. Um, and then and worse against everything else. Yeah, and you have less range if you do that too. Um, and the, the the ammo penalty is huge. Minus six is is kind of ridiculous. Um, in exchange for, like situationally, sometimes better ammo efficiency, but it's really finicky to use, and it's only against some enemies. And also, it's like barely better than just shooting a normal breach cutter build twice. I think this is, this is like if you add me saying that. that this is good because you can shoot in front of you and then release quickly to let the shot go behind you and hit enemies behind you i will pick you up and drop you into a giant meat grinder that just is insane. turn around <laughs> has, have, you actually turn been, around. have you actually been i've back? seen that take multiple times yeah there's no way anyways <laughs> sorry, sorry. that is insane <laughs> anyways <laughs> Okay, okay. Second balance overclock. High voltage crossover. Um, this is minus one mag size in exchange for an electrocution effect, which is like four seconds long and it's not that much damage. Um it deals a little more damage, uh, but the minus mag size is a really big deal, especially since it's uh it's a minus one third mag size thing. So if you take tier one mag size, you end up with four. Um this and, effect on other guns would be pretty good. On this yes, gun, not so much. It would be, but the breach cutter at base already just like kills so much stuff by its own on its own. Um, yeah. And the the target Anything pool, that you would want to get that the like the electro effect would do meaningful damage to already gets one shot by the breach. And anything bigger, you're probably just shooting more shots to kill with the breach. So yeah, yeah. Eh. I it's I think it's worse than nothing. It's like, it's not terrible. I don't think. I think it's you like, could. You could put this in equivalent to base, but it could also be in worse than nothing. Yes. It's, it's whatever. I think in most situations, it's just, it's, it's worse. Um, but it, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it's a mix up. It's not that bad, but it's, it's not very good either. Um, 
if it no. were harder for like Angie to get, I mean, if you really wanted to like get electric effect for synergies, you could, but Angie has other ways to do it. Yes. So it's, you know, and also, like, the lock mod tier 3A, this exists. Yeah, to exactly. That. So, um, next, spinning death. This is a weird one. I feel like the niche it gives you is not better than Breach Cutter, but it's another like pretty strong effect. Um, it essentially makes it so that you only have one shot in your magazine or two if you take tier one max, um, max size, but you shouldn't do that. Um, in, ex uh, in exchange for having a projectile that doesn't move that fast, but it spins around in place uh, and it has a lot less DPS. Yeah. Um, I think this was already reasonably good, and then it got buffed to be better. And yes. I think this is an at the lowest B, possibly A. Really, you're you're putting it that high. Yeah. I, I I think spinning death is quite good. Don't know if I agree. I think, like in a vacuum, spinning death is a pretty strong effect. But I guess this is partially me coming from a modded standpoint and a team play standpoint, especially where all the classes do different roles. Um, but Engineer's Breach Cutter is really good at pushing power, and the Spinning Death does not do that. Um, like, Breach Cutter is one of the best, best pushing tools in the game, because it, it's a really high DPS forward-traveling beam that leaves behind a field of safety as you go, so it kills all the Stormers, um, and it, like, it obliterates infinite density Grunt, grunt Storms of, um, that you shoot it at, right? Um, so it's really nice for cleaving space, Spinning Death is really good defensively. However, NG, I don't think, really needs that. Um, because you have options like EM Discharge, you have Proxy Nades, you have Turret Whip, um, and also you have teammates that can accomplish that effect relatively well. However, it does I... depend on how much you're leading into a role. I, do, I will say, most of my Engineer play on Modded has been uh, single player. So, mm. yes, my in, opinion in might solo, be skewed yes. here. I, I would agree. In solo, it's very strong because you can just repel everything into a choke and then just shoot it there uh, and do what Fatboy does, except you have like eight more shots. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I think in team play, it's, it's not, no, it doesn't fill a more valuable niche in Breach. So I, I don't really feel comfortable placing it higher than the Breach. Things I think C is is fine. Yes, I think this is like situationally like very strong. Um, like in solo, or if your team is doing the strategy where you funnel everything into a choke and hold cryo down it, um, <laughs> spinning death is like good. It's like it's like a tier probably. Um, but most of the time, and in a lot of team play situations, I don't think it's better than base breach. Um, next, we have Inferno, our last overclock for the Breach Cutter. This one says that it reduces your damage by a lot, uh, in exchange for adding heat and fire damage to it. It doesn't actually do that. Uh, it, like, it has 90% of base Breach's DPS, I believe, if you don't account yeah. for... I don't remember the exact numbers, but it barely reduces your yes. direct damage. And in exchange for, like basically igniting everything in front of it um and dealing yeah. it deals extra damage to fire weak enemies like Mactera and stuff um yeah like the easiest way to see that is that praetorians do not have fire resist or fire vulnerability but inferno still kills them slightly quicker than yeah. normal breach cutter yeah and it it's way better for spitballers uh and yeah. Mactera. It, it is essentially a um a mild damage increase and also, it, it's a significant damage increase against fire-weak enemies. And also, it lights them on fire, so you get fire spread, and also, it, it, like, it activates VB, and you also get yeah. Executioner Tier 3A. Or, uh, so it's it's a clean that makes the Breach Cutter just do, in most situations, significantly more damage. Um, and it also activates a bunch of fires and energies. I think it's, like, it's probably, like, high B or low A. It doesn't make the Breach Cutter that much better. But it makes it could it be yeah. yeah, it makes it very noticeably better. Um I'm like look I'm looking at RJ two fifty and A though, and <laughs> I don't know. Well that's the kind of thing where it's like again, 
the overclock versus the full package like i would i would say inferno breach cutter is you know generally better than rj250 pgl but rj250 is like more transformative for pgl so i think per what you said at the start if we're talking like how happy you are to get them i think if you use pgl you're very happy to get rj250 yeah i i i suppose that's fair yeah, yeah, okay. Well, at the same time, though, it doesn't, like... I feel like it doesn't really belong in this B tier, either. Kind mm. of. But, like, the thing is, Inferno is good because it's a damage upgrade for Breach that comes with some other benefits. I don't think it's actually, like, that huge as an overclock. It's just that it's giving nice stuff to a gun that is already very good. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I can, I can, I can believe that. We'll keep it in B, uh, for now. Okay, moving on to the shred diffractor. Uh, we have efficiency tweaks. I said that I don't like ammo overclocks, but this one is really strong for whatever reason. Um, it gives you twenty five mag size and uh, a bit more ammo. Um, and the funny thing is that. Compared to automated beam controller, it's like it actually has basically the same total ammo if you take a uh, tier three uh, charge speed on an ABC, which you should because it's like kind of unwieldy with max size. Um, and it also has just like no downside. It gives you a lot of max size uh, and a pretty decent chunk of ammo. And I think it's just it's a little overtuned for a clean, in my opinion. Uh, but it's also like not insane because shard at base isn't like isn't super crazy or anything yeah I, I mean i think it's nice but i don't think it's um i wouldn't call it overtuned i would call this a nice noticeable clean okay yeah maybe abc is just undertuned uh, i think, I think like... abc is fun but i i do think abc is like not usually a very good idea yeah i think this is like a probably like a high c or low b um yeah i would put this in c yeah okay i, I don't think it's b worthy but i do think it's it's definitely better than base mm -hmm. um abc next this one gives you a decent amount of extra ammo it's a uh, plus 100 i believe in exchange you can't stop holding your fire button or you lose a lot of ammo um it's like it's fine. I think it's a little bit better than nothing. The extra ammo is like decent. I think it also gives you a yeah. little bit of extra rate of fire. If it I gives, yeah, correctly. it gives you some rate of fire. Um, but it's not um, like huge. Yeah, it's. I mean, if you're taking tier three B, which, like you said, you should. It's you're not rooted in place for that long using this. It is a downside. I think you could put automated beam controller in approximately equivalent to base. Like, depending on the mission, it can be rough, mm -hmm. but it, it it depends. I think if you were looking at it just in case of the missions it does well on, um, where you end up, you like, you don't have enemy compositions that punish you for, like, being more immobile mm -hmm. for a bit, then it would be in C. I think if you were looking at just the missions that do, it would be in worse than nothing. I think in general, it's like pretty close to the base weapon okay yeah yeah i i, I can look up behind that um next we have two feedback loops apparently uh i'll move this one down you shouldn't um, scroll down that far it makes me see all the overclocks we have to get through <laughs> it is quite a bit of overclocks <laughs> anyways the feedback loop um this one makes your beam gain damage and aoe like plus one damage and plus 0.3 meters aoe for every second you hold down your fire button um i think this is like a really strong effect if you have the ammo to spend on it you can basically obliterate a swarm for as long as you can hold down your fire button but if you want to do that you have to spend a fourth of your ammo pool um yeah Taking I think two. that this is a really, really well-designed overclock because the upside is genuinely very big. 
Um, and that's that's true in both vanilla and modded, mm. but uh, the downside is also felt. So like the, the resource management aspect of Shard Diffractor with this overclock uh, is pretty meaningful. I think yes. that this is, I don't know, maybe B, B or C. I want to say B because I do feel like the contextually the upside is quite good and like the ammo penalty hurts but you can work with it mm -hmm. um i can yeah i i can understand a b rating i think it's it's like actually really strong in solo like it might be the best shard overclock in solo um it, it kind of hurts that tier 5b is limited to four procs a second um and I feel like, I feel like the big dilemma with this is on tier five. Like, if you don't take Dazzler module tier five C, which the slowdown, grunts actually do tend to push you, um, but you lose a lot of ammo efficiency without tier five B, um, and also you lose like M one holding time. I, I I think it's like a like a high C low B for how much it improves the gun. Um, it's really kind of awkward to use in team play situations because you have to hold down M1 for a long time to get value out of it. And if there's something, like if there's a really dense grunt swarm in front of you, then doing that often takes too long for it to be like very meaningful because your team will kill it. Um I think it's like yeah. I think it's like a C tier for that, but it's like high C and it's really well designed. I agree. I think it could use a little more ammo but um it's it's like it's it's a little too limiting in my opinion um yeah next. that's fine vault impact reactor this one we talked about it a little bit before this call yeah it is i i think this is a nest here yes i agree it is it is stupid strong um again this is like in the context of vanilla difficulties how did this thing make it into the game? Like, infinite range, places down sticky, um, and the downside is you have halved mag size, but that's not a huge downside since you can take tier 3A, and also it makes your gun, like, ridiculously good at killing a lot of enemies, and against the enemies that it's not ridiculously good at, it doesn't really suffer because 50 ammo is still good enough to chunk down a praetorian or a spitballer or what have you um yeah this it's is, really it good. gives you like a really really good area denial over large areas it, you know it doesn't it doesn't slow enemies as well as sticky flames on crisper but it, it still you know it still deals with them very well it scales mm -hmm. extremely well with enemy density and you can still flexibly use it to kill tanky enemies yeah it's like a you're normally giving up some, not not all, but like a good deal of your like group killing potential by taking shard diffractor. But with this, you're not, and it's still close to as good at uh, killing uh, groups of enemies. I think it's like honestly, it, or single enemies. I think it's like better you lose charge capacity, but that's fine. I, I think like the big thing between this and breach is that it's like. It's it's better at killing because you can just kill the grunt storms as they spawn. Yeah, However, you, you just you put you down would... like magma whenever enemies are spawning in, and then they will probably die before they reach you. Yes, um, except but... for the big guys, but it's still good against the big guys. Yes, I, I think the big downside when you take this is that you lose self defense compared to the breach cutter, which NG does suffer with. But if you have the mechanical capability, or you're not playing on a difficulty that punishes you that hard for that. You yeah. can just kill everything. Or if you're just in a really big open space. Yes. Um, if you're in a big cave, this is like... It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah. It has hit scan infinite range. Yeah. I think it's S tier. Uh, okay, let me be clear though. I don't think it's like better than Inferno strictly, but as an overclock, it is really good. It is making more of an impact on the yes. gun than Inferno. Yes. Uh, next. Foster Catalyst. Um... The downside for this is actually not very big at all. It has like a 50 MO downside and a bit more recharge time. 
but recharge time can be like mostly ignored if you just pull out your pickaxe for a second after you shoot. Um, the effect itself, it doubles your AoE damage when you're like shooting at a platform, and then if you hold it down for a while, it creates this huge 300 damage explosive um, yeah, explosion that deals really good damage, but it also like almost one-shots you if you're in the explosion. Yeah. The explosion um, is bigger than it looks. Yes. It's 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 very large, which is a double-edged sword. Um, I think the big problem with this overclock is its flexibility, because to take advantage of it, you have to place a platform down, and then you have to shoot at the platform, which means you can't really switch targets without um, without either losing the benefit or like not being able to proc the explosion. Um, also, enemies oftentimes will interrupt your beam, preventing you from triggering the explosion. Um, and the two times AoE damage is a lot less meaningful when you can't like move your gun around. Yeah, um, it it used to be. Um, I I forget exactly the stats on it before, but I I'm pretty sure the explosion used to be worse and take longer. And back then, it was more about uh, just using the doubled mm -hmm. beam damage and radius on platforms. Yeah. Then it got changed. Now it's more about the explosion. It's yeah. difficult to use. It's, it's not always difficult to use. It's difficult to get like the full benefit out of, yes. you know, difficult to optimize for. But it's it's still like fairly good. And I think that it's okay for it to be difficult to use because it means that like either through planning or mechanics, it has like a fairly high skill ceiling. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I guess I would put this in c or low b probably i think i would not put it higher than feedback loop personally um i feel like yeah i, I definitely don't think it's better than uh feedback loop um but that's you know i think i think what i said was feedback loop was also b or c so yeah. that lines up yeah it's like i feel like these two tiers are kind of crowded but yeah well that's that's gonna happen yes <laughs> i i think a lot of overclocks are at similar levels of power. So mm -hmm. unless we get like really granular with the tiers, it's going to be like that. Yes. Okay. Next, overdrive booster. Uh, we were talking about this a bit earlier. It basically allows you to go into an alternate firing mode where you consume two ammo, but output 2.5 times more damage. Um, it has no downside if you don't activate the upside. Um, it's quite strong, I think. It's like it's the best single target option for engine secondary slot. Um, as an AoE option, it's not amazing um, because it's kind of awkward to use and you have to stand in place to use it. Um, but it is also a clean in disguise and its effect is quite potent. Yeah, um, you do 10 more billion damage per second to whatever you're shooting at. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's really nice with ECR. Um, it's really nice with tier 5A because you can like proc electricity with this overclock and then shred them with ODB. Um, it's really good against dreads if they're not aggroed onto you. Um, yeah, I think it's 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 very solid. Um, I think it's stronger than hyperprop almost all of the time, but I don't feel like it's A tier. Um, because the single target damage that it outputs is not like is is not so strong that it outweighs completely the difficulty of using it because you have to stand in place and use your whole mag, uh, and it's competing with breach cutter in the same slot. Um, I feel like it's a B tier overclock. I could see an argument for A, but I feel like the thing where you have to stand still can kind of screw you over sometimes, and it also takes a decent amount of uh, attention to use, unlike Hyperprop. Um, I think it's better than Hyperprop in like most scenarios, as I said, but I don't feel like it's as good as these. Yeah, I think I think B is fine. I Depending on the day you asked me, I might put it in A, but I think uh -huh. B also makes sense. Okay. Oh, we're halfway through. We're done with NG now. <laughs> halfway, okay. 
minigun. Uh, starting with a little more oomph. I feel like this overclock is kind of underrated. Um, it gives you one more damage and minus 0.2 seconds of spin-up time. I like running this with chamber pressure. Yes, I agree. A lot of people say they like running it for the absolute minimum spin-up time. I think it's better with chamber pressure. I mm -hmm. think that's kind of a fun mini synergy that going on there. Yeah, I definitely agree. Uh, and with chamber pressure, it's like kind of just better exhaust vectoring. Um, plus on damage with chamber pressure does hit a lot, of, uh, hits a lot of the relevant breakpoints. Um, and it's just very responsive overall because of the minus spin up time. Um, yeah, I kind of agree with you actually. Like exhaust vectoring, you'll have worse accuracy than this. You will get better damage than this if you're taking if you're also taking chamber pressure on exhaust vectoring. Uh, mm -hmm. But the thing is, uh, tier four B is underrated, and if you're playing difficult missions, faster spin up time is really good. Yes, really, really good. Yeah, I basically always run tier four B because it's so much more responsive. Yes, I run it on basically everything except. Uh this and sometimes let storm um but almo a little more oomph lets you forego tier 4b in exchange for more damage and then it's like just kind of better than exhaust vectoring um i feel like it's not like a crazy boost but it's it's in in the high c to low b range i would say yeah i mean i would put it in c um but i think putting it in B with the caveat that it's barely in B is uh, mm. understandable. Yeah. I think, like... Yeah, I don't think it's quite as shape, like, as as relevant or as impactful as these B tier overclocks are. Uh, so I'm going to put it in and see. Um, then to drum walls next. This is, like, borderline bad i think like borderline and it, it's nothing. literally an upgrade but it's it's very minimal well it's almost an upgrade but the it, it comes with like, no uh comes with no downsides but minus cooling, cooling rate, is, rate not, is situationally not good yeah yeah um and the plus 300 max ammo is like it's nothing um or not minus cooling rate plus cooling rate is situationally not good because of hot bullets yeah um and aggressive venting but yeah, but I mean, usually when you're going for aggressive venting, you're shooting the whole time until you hit it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think it's like, I think there's no argument to be made that this is like basically just the base minigun. Um, yeah, that this isn't basically just the base minigun, rather. Um, yeah. Next, Burning Hell. This one I is... think Burning Hell is A or S. Really, A or S? Um, yes. I can definitely get behind A. Uh, it increases your heat generation, which is actually an upside, because you want a lot of heat to proc aggressive venting or hot bullets. Um, it makes you have a really big fire code, which is like very nice. Uh, for igniting stuff at close range, and it's really good for crowd clear. Um, yeah, it makes means you're more easily able to take stun uh, while dealing with crowds, especially when yes. single. Like, you're less likely to take blow through on a good team anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but if, if you're if you're pubbing or playing single player, you probably want blow through mm -hmm. on minigun normally. But because you already have a sort of AoE effect, it's easier to take stun, and that makes you safer, makes it easier to inflict the fire yes uh, um it's really good with volatile bullets obviously really i think that this is bullets. yeah like putting it saying that it might be an s might be exaggerating a little but i think that's that is partially like my own bias because i think burning hell is very fun mm -hmm. but it is also because uh it is a really good and really obvious synergy with volatile bullets yeah yeah I don't think it's quite S tier. Like, I don't think it transforms a gun so much that it reaches the level of this stuff. Um, you still don't have amazing close quarters clear because the 
heat cone itself doesn't do any damage, so you just have to wait for them to burn to death, um, which means that some enemies can push you back a lot, and sometimes you take a lot of bites from stormers, not because of the sporadic heat cone uh, proccing, at least. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it's quite S tier, but it's 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 really good. I think it's definitely high A. Yeah, A is fine. If you put it in any lower than A, I would leave the call. <laughs> uh, next, compact feed mechanism. I think this is like worse than nothing. Uh, it's plus eight hundred ammo, which is a lot of ammo. Uh, plus like a third of your ammo pool if you take damage, which you definitely should with this overclock. Um, at the cost of four rate of fire uh, out of your thirty. So, yeah. um. That rate of fire down is like a 15% rate of fire down. It's quite big. Um, and it gives you kind of more ammo than you need a lot of the time. Um, because you spend that ammo slower uh, and you have a lot more of it. Um, the rate of fire down feels really bad. Minigun is a weapon that like really likes having rate of fire. Um, and losing 15% of it is just... Not great. Uh, I think the only real saving grace for this overclock is that it minigun doesn't generate heat based on um, based on per bullet, uh, but rather just per like by firing time. But that's not really a huge upside in terms compared to how much this overclock gimps your DPS. Yeah, I mean, I think was it you or was it someone else that? a bit back i mentioned in like drg chat that i always want to try i always think max ammo minigun will be funny and then it's just kind of depressing it, it was me it was me it was me yeah i remember that that's like i like having big ammo number um i mean honestly i think it's like it's is okay under like normal circumstances if you're taking the damage up taking like max ammo is really bad mm -hmm. it's like really truly bad and yeah. it's the the rate of fire downside is enough to be noticeable but not enough that you actually want to take the rate of fire yes. mod really instead of the yeah. spread yeah and it's like yeah i yeah I think it's. Like, I do kind of enjoy it sometimes, but I don't think it's gonna. I don't enjoy it at all. It it feels really bad. Um, like I could see someone arguing that it's here, but I I don't. I hate ammo overclocks. I think worse than nothing. This well, like I said, sometimes I enjoy using it. I do also think it's worse than nothing. Yeah, it's really, ugh, really rough. Next, exhaust breaker. Um, we were talking about this a bit earlier. It gives you plus two hundred fifty percent spread in exchange for two ammo or two damage. Sorry, <laughs> two ammo. Um, the two damage is noticeable, but the spread is very noticeable. Um, it takes a lot longer for your minigun to get accurate enough to hit the enemies you wanted to hit. Um, and when you release your firing button, it very quickly goes into the range where you are inaccurate again, and you'll you'll start missing like Macterra. Uh, weak points after like a second of releasing the firing button um, I think the accuracy feels really bad and the damage up is oftentimes not enough to justify it um, personally I think it's like it's like about the same as the base minigun for me or maybe even worse I think I, I would I would put it in C but not by much I think that it is like, you look at the stats and you look at, like, with the accuracy mod, the accuracy is still better than base, so it's like, okay, that's not that bad. But if you use the mini gun a lot, you're probably used to the accuracy with the accuracy mod. Yes. Um, And it does feel worse. I don't think it feels, the accuracy feels that much worse. I do think I would rather run this than a base minigun, mm. but not by a ton. Mm. Okay. I think I'm gonna put it down here, just because like Elmo is here, and it's. I think in almost all situations, this is just strictly better. Um, and losing that, losing that accuracy feels really bad because you have a lot harder of a time, like doing the minigun thing where it's good at all ranges, and uh, your range of engagement or range of 
fast engagement rather is really is can be really rough against further targets um i don't think the damage is enough to justify that so i'm I'm just gonna put it here um, sure <laughs> okay up next this thing bullet hell um this overclock gives you a 75 percent chance to ricochet your bullet um Upon hitting an enemy, or hitting the ground, or hitting a freight cloud, or a neurotoxin cloud, um, in exchange, you lose 3 damage per pellet, and you get 6 times base spread. Okay. This overclock is really, really maligned by the community, uh, and I think it's in no small part due to your video about the minigun. Where... I don't know if it's... I, I feel like the opinion was already... Uh... Yeah pretty set in stone before my video but it, it, was. it is definitely part of it but but i, I mean it's like your opinion so much or your yeah video. well i'm that happens regardless even if it's <laughs> like just their interpretation of the video or whatever but like the thing is my opinion on this hasn't really changed in vanilla i do like running this on modded difficulties because on has six times two or whatever slight variations I play. I don't go super high with modded difficulties. I don't play like seven times two really, or like, mm. you know, lunatic or whatever. I normally mm. just play six times two, but like on modded, I prefer, the, I find the, like the stun synergy with this a lot more useful. I find aggressive venting more useful in modded. And I find the combination of those two things, particularly a lot more useful. So I, I like on, on modded single player. I like this on modded, in a group, I like it okay, and in vanilla, I I still don't really like this. Mm. I think in vanilla it is not as clearly like strong as it is in modded, but I still think it is quite strong. Um, like the big safety thing is not as relevant in vanilla, but you still get to hold M one like forever with no with no fear of getting hit uh, with this overclock. And it's especially noticeable in lower grunt densities, lower grunt density uh, difficulties, because like you can just kind of hold M1 and not have to like worry about taking damage because you just stunlock everything. Um, it's really, really ammo heavy if you play it that way, but um, it's still, in my opinion, like quite strong. Uh, I don't think it's... I don't think it's worse than base at all. Uh, and, and also with uh, hot bullets, you get decent fire spread on top of that. Uh, and it's well, really I good. I don't think I would call it worse than base regardless. Mm -hmm. um, I think that like... I don't know. Like my, my opinion on this is split based on the difficulty, as I've said. But I do think that like... I mean, if... Like, yeah, you can hold down M1 on vanilla difficulties and kill stuff, but I would rather kill, like, stuff I'm specifically aiming at faster, and I don't care about stun-locking everything if I'm already playing at a difficulty that I feel comfortable about winning pretty much no matter what I do. Mm -hmm. So this is sort of whatever. When I, when I start going up to a difficulty where it's challenging me more, then I start caring about the stun more. Yes. So you could say that, like, potentially that's just a factor of, like, if you're a, a player that is not as used to Has5, then maybe you would have the same opinion of Bullet Hell that I have for it on Has6 times 2. Mm. And that's fine. But, you know. Yeah. I think that, yeah, like... I can, I can understand that, yeah. Particularly because of, like, I don't think the game feel with Bullet Hell is very good. I don't, I don't feel like it's likely for my take on it to change. Mm. But I guess, like, what... Like, what rating uh, would you put this at, just in a vacuum? I, I feel like it's, like, it's like a B-tier overclock, but I think part of that may be because I do play a lot of modded, and aggressive venting is really strong on modded, and aggressive venting is especially strong with bullet hell. Um, and also, I typically, like, play difficulties that are very threatening, and the stun feels pretty good on that um but i i could i could see like a c tier placement i'm fine with b especially because we're not just looking at vanilla mm -hmm. um 
I mean, I like I would only basically the only gripe I would have about the placement of this is if like you placed it uh equal to or higher than Burning Hell. Oh, no, I think it's, Burning it's Hell definitely is definitely not, better than Bullet Hell. Yeah, it's Hell. definitely not better than Bullet Hell. Um Yeah. We'll, we'll put it in B. Just to like counteract the opinions, you know, the public perception. Um next. Ludstorm for the Ludstorm. LSLS for short. Um, the salon gives you a plus four damage boost. Um, in exchange, you can't move at all while you're shooting it, uh, and you have basically negligible stun. Uh, it's like times 0.25 uh, stun chance and duration, I believe, or like half stun duration. Um, so it's basically nothing in terms of stun. It actually can be worse than nothing because sometimes you like unload into a Praetorian while they're spitting and then they get stunned for half a second and they stop spitting and turn towards you. Yeah. Or you can stun a menace and just make it burrow, which I mean, that might be good, but mm -hmm. you might also have just wanted it to stay there for like half a second more for you to kill it. Yeah. Um, the damage up is is really large, though. Uh, plus four is, is a lot for the minigun. Uh, even if you're taking yeah. damage, it's like it's plus 30% damage. Um, yeah, the... I think this is one that's like it can be kind of difficult if you are solo or with a team that isn't handling um, squishy enemies that well. Mm -hmm. But if you're playing with a team that like has a good driller or whatever, and you're able to more freely focus on just spraying into tanky enemies or high priority targets mm -hmm. then it feels very good um i think it is honestly better than it was before because sting tails exist now and yes. armor break lead storm lead storm is very good at lasering down sting tails yes um i think it is the most pure minigun overclock in mm -hmm. the sense that like it cares the most about your skill as a player uh because it you can kind of get punished more for bad positioning with this Yes. But also you're rewarded more for your aim. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I would put this like B or A. I do think that this is not as good as Burning Hell. Yeah, I would agree. But I do think in the right... I think in the right team, it's not much worse. Yeah, yeah. I can... Uh, yeah, I, I generally agree. Um, and also, there's the aspect of B-hopping, where you can like just jump to avoid the yeah. movement penalty, uh, which is a big part of the skill required to use this overclock. Um, yeah, I, I think it. I think it suits the B tier. I don't think it's like as game changing as some of the stuff above it, but it's very strong. I think it's edging on A personally. Um, okay, moving on to the auto cannon. Ah. Uh, um, okay. We'll start with composite drums. This is a, just a clean ammo overclock. It's 110 more rounds and a slightly faster reload. I think it's like, it's nothing. The auto cannon already has a huge ammo pool, like that you can actively struggle to get through a lot of the time. Um, and adding more ammo to that ammo pool is like not particularly useful, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, it's not a big deal. The The reload speed is also not a big deal because of the cancel. Mm -hmm. I think that it does it does mean you can cancel slightly earlier, but it's fairly marginal. Yeah. Um, I think you could put this in a... Putting this in C would probably be, like, slightly overkill. I think yes. it's probably, like, cool to base. Yeah, I, I would agree. Like, it's a, it's a ammo upside, but it's an ammo upside on a weapon that already has a ridiculous amount of ammo and also like isn't that strong um at using that ammo um okay next splintering shells this is a plus one area damage and slightly bigger aoe um it's okay like uh with the buff of carpet bomber it's i think it's a little less relevant than it used to be um because it like the extra area damage doesn't hit really any relevant breakpoints any uh and the radius is nice but 
it doesn't augment the killing power of the autocannon enough where it's like really amazing or anything. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would put this and Corporate Bomber both in C. Um, and I guess, like, you do feel Corporate Bomber's downsides more, but, like, now that it has slightly more, slightly more AoE, I feel like it's a little more equivalent. Like, if you asked me before the recent Corporate Bomber buff, which is a small buff, to be yeah. fair, but still, before that buff, I would have put Corporate Bomber in, like, equivalent to base. Mm -hmm. Um for its, you know, downsides plus upsides. I think now it ekes it up into C. I think maybe Splintering Shells is still slightly better than Carpet Bomber, but... Mm. Yeah, I, I think, like, I think Carpet Bomber hitting the uh, the Swarmer Breakpoint now, just by, like, default without the Tier 5A is actually quite nice. Uh, and, like, compared it to where... Is. It is, but the fall-off, though, means it's not that consistent. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, can, I, can, I can understand both of these in C. Um... It feels a little wrong to me to put like an auto cannon overclock this high because like I think these two overclocks are worse than this one. Um <laughs> but that's just because auto cannon is like not in an amazing place right now. Um okay, next. Combat mobility. Uh this one has your mag size in exchange for a bit of a speed boost when you're, or not speed boost, but it mitigates the speed downside of firing your auto cannon, and you get a little bit more minimum rate of fire and 1.5 times faster uh, rate of fire buildup. Yeah, and a bit you more. Don't get more max rate of fire. If you had more max rate of fire, it'd be a bit better. It's just rate of fire scaling goes up faster. Yes. Um, your base spread is a bit better, but your spread is still bad. Uh, yes. Yeah, this I mean this overclock is named after the worst thing that it gives, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. And I... it is uh it's it's I mean Vic Vertha's right there. Yes. Vic Vertha's right there. And it's the same downside or the same big downside. Yeah. The and, downside uh, on Big Bertha is like understandable for combat mobility it does having not make sense. Half the mag size is so punishing. Yes, and you're so much better at spending it too because of the way the overclock functions. Um, yeah, you you get up to max rate of fire faster, and then you just have no ammo, which means you reload you. faster. Yeah. I I want combat mobility to be way bigger than this. Combat mobility should be a clean. It doesn't need a downside. Yes, I, I would agree. It's like it, the 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 downside right now is just so overboard. Half your mag size. If it is has a downside, so it should be way less than this. Yes, yeah, I would agree. I think it's worse than nothing, personally. Yeah. Okay. Next, Big Bertha. Just talking about this, it has the same downside, uh, where it has half mag size, and it also has uh, one point five less max rate of fire, rate of fire. Um, in exchange, you get and also also it has minus one hundred ten max ammo. Oh, yeah. Uh, in exchange, you get 12 direct damage, uh, and you get slightly less base spread. It's like 70% of true base spread, I believe. Uh, and it's generally pretty strong, I think. Um, it lets yes. you kill veterans, unlike the normal autocannon. Um, yeah. The like, I, I am not as... Uh, I don't feel as bad about the autocannon as you do, I think. But I do think like auto cannon is, with most setups, you know, worse than his other primaries. And Big Bertha is like a really big boost to what the auto cannon does, mm -hmm. even yeah. with the mag size penalty. Yeah, I would agree. Um, it kind of does feel bad uh, if you don't take tier one B, because you have such a small mag but also tier 1c is really good because of the ammo penalty um which puts it in a bit of an awkward spot build tree wise i think the autocannon's mod tree is like just badly designed in general it hurts so much because rate of fire is on like every tier um but B big bertha is like i think it's what the autocannon wishes it was at base it's just like it's pretty good at killing things um in terms of how much improves the weapon i think it's like i think you could like argue that it's like a tier but 
I feel like the pretty large would, mag size penalty is like... I would personally put it in B, but if you yeah. want to put it in A, that's fine. No, I, I think I agree with the B placement. It's just like, the, the penalty is, is really quite large. Um, Alright, next up. This thing. NTP. <gasps> Before I even start. Okay. The overclock itself gives you a 50% chance to inflict the neurotoxin effect um, in exchange for 6 of your area damage and 110 max ammo, and you also get a little bit of a bigger um, AoE. I think because of the way the fear mod is applied, and because of the consistency of neurotoxin application of this overclock, it is like stupid i think we all know that it's it's stupid powerful um it takes like a really mediocre weapon like into a, a pub ruining machine you hold m1 and everything runs away and dies while they're doing it um fear is a, like a stupid effect and its interaction with slowdowns where uh slowdowns extend the fear effect because fear forces the bug to move a certain distance um is really stupid and Neurotoxin Payload is a prime example of why it is stupid busted. It's like an easy S tier for me. I think I think it should be S tier. I do think it is a little worse than some of the other S tiers. I think it's like slightly exaggerated how good this is. Really? Not by a lot. I but don't know. Slightly. I, <laughs> I think, I think that like I think people's feelings on Neurotoxin Payload are influenced somewhat by how boring Neurotoxin Payload is to play with, and that it can be kind of annoying to have someone join your random game and make your game more boring. Mm -hmm. um, I do think it's S tier, but I don't think it's like... I do not think it is as much of like a game-defining problem overclock as people sometimes talk about it as. I don't know if I agree. Um, like, it takes the auto cannon, which is not very good, and it like it makes it like one of the best weapons of the game, hands down. I think this is like I would rather have neurotoxin payload than persistent plasma, ECR executioner, or volatile impact reactor. Personally, like because it's so low attention cost to use, like you just hold M1, and all the bugs get feared and neurotoxined. And it takes, like, no skill, but it has this absurd effect. I mean, I, I agree with, like, basically everything you said there, but I do, I, I do also think that its status is a bit exaggerated, because people... This may just be, like, me speaking of, like, the way people speak of NTP, but I think it is... I think it is S-tier. Mm. Um, I don't think it is as much of like i do not think it's like this is the best overclock like i think executioner is better than the ntp for really? instance yeah i don't know if i agree with that but i, I think it's mostly just semantics or it's it's not an important details. distinction because important we both distinction. agree on the yeah. tier that it's in so yeah okay next overking theme mechanism moving on to the hurricane now um I think the Hurricane's Queens are both very strong. OFM gives you just one extra rate of fire, uh, and also gives you a little bit more rocket speed. It's like 1.2 times. Um, on a gun that has, at base, three rate of fire, plus one rate of fire is very strong. Um, if you're not taking the rate of fire mod in tier three, it's a 33% ammo boost, or DPS boost, and even if you are, it's like still a 20% or 25% damage boost. Um, it also lets you take tier 3 mag size without feeling too bad about it, uh, which is really good for sustain, yeah. um, which I think is like the strongest thing this overclock does. Um, I think it's quite good overall. Yeah, yeah, this is a, a very nice clean. Yeah, I think it's like very high C or low B. Yeah, I, I, I think it would be understandable to put this into B. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
it's like not that it's not a flashy effect but like plus one rate of fire is is quite big on the hurricane yeah yeah i would agree i think i'm putting it in b um frag missiles is kind of i think frag missiles is also good i think it's not quite as good as over two and feed mechanism uh i think it depends a little worse i think it depends on what you want um the aoe and the aero damage is nice if you're looking for ignitions and like just safety against natasites and swarmers um but ofm gives you better sustain which i think is really valuable in a pub and solo context um i think like i think they're like very very similar in power i think the hurricane is in overall a pretty good spot aside from mine layer um i i want to put this in b as well it's like the aoe is is actually quite a big aoe increase it's bigger than frag shells yeah um or splinter shells and not as big as the the mod but yeah and you're probably taking both yeah you should take both um and also it's on the hurricane which is a very strong weapon at base as well um next we have plasma burst missiles which have been recently buffed and they are a lot better now uh they used to be like perhaps just the straight up worst overclock in the game but now they um have your damage in exchange for getting to pierce enemies uh and to pierce terrain if you hit an enemy with it uh so you get like they buffed it to like 10 pierces didn't they nine question mark there's they it can hit enemies nice. up to 10 times hits up to i 10 forget times. exactly how the interaction works like they're not all there's like two different values that it decreases when it hits enemies depending on yeah how things work out but it i don't know some some the specifics aren't that important yes uh the point is it can hit enemies up to 10 times um, yeah. or i mean if enemies get hit by the aoe technically more but the aoe is very small mm-hmm. uh and now it has pretty good damage uh having all it has like a theoretical max damage output that is insane uh if you hit all those bursts you get a ridiculous amount of total damage um in practice you still end up hitting walls uh, and sometimes you kill the enemy a little bit too soon um, yeah you will sometimes lose some efficiency from you still occasionally lose missiles on walls and stuff but yes they're so much better at avoiding them than they used to be we're not really avoiding they just kind of they just, skate along the yeah. walls but yeah i I'd, i'm honestly not sure where i want to put this but i think it feels like pretty good right now yes i think it's at the very least like a, a very high b it i think it might be a um it is really good at single target if you let it build up over time um it's also like pretty good at grunt clear and it's also very good at um Mectera and whatever you want yeah. to shoot it at it's just very it's, strong it's generally. very flexible while yes. being good at single target yeah like it's it's less it's a little less good at like immediately lasering down something compared to lead storm but like it's not that much worse you do still deal reasonably well with high prior- priority targets you do good damage to big boys mm-hmm. uh and it's it's better at usually anyway better at clearing out like uh groups of grunts than lead storm lead storm i yes. think and it, it also abuses the tier 5 stun mod very well yeah um, i think it's like uh i'd like to put an a a is fine yeah yeah uh next we have this one mind their system um it gives you three times area of effect damage if you hit the ground with it in exchange for like 36 max ammo uh it also re- removes your ability to guide your missiles but i think that is yeah 50 percent more aoe radius oh yes it's that uh, too. speaking of you know the bullet hell pinch earlier this is another thing where it kind of changes based on difficulty right because the only reason that anyone doesn't think that this overclock is insanely good is because they are playing on a difficulty that isn't challenging them very much yes if you're playing if you're either like not very used to has five or if you are graduating from has five to modded difficulties you will quickly find that when you need to clear out large numbers of bugs mine layer is ridiculously good yes uh it's, it's like, like stupid good it's unreasonable. yeah if, <laughs> if you're playing has five with a group of players 
that are all reasonably good at has five, you may find that uh, other players are clearing out the bugs before you can blow up the bugs with your mines. If there's enough bugs that the pl other players can't do that, either because the other players are not that good or because you're playing on modded, so there's more bugs, um, there is almost nothing, possibly literally nothing in the game as good at killing uh, just s big swarms of bugs and grunt veterans and such yes. than Mine Layer. Yeah. It also does like a stupid amount of single target damage. It does like 260 DPS, which is a little bit under that of Leadstorm, Leadstorm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> as long as the enemy isn't like an oppressor, you will still yeah. do good single target damage to it, even though it's not exactly made for that yes and also its downside is like not big at all um the guidance is not super important and again it makes it worse against mactera but yes. it's not if you're in like a tunnel even that won't matter that much yes and mactera that are close to you still you know it's just a normal hurricane um mine layer system is is absolutely stupid like easy s tier might be the most broken overclock in the game. It's like top three at least. Um, okay. Next, jet fuel homebrew. Um, this is I, a little. I think this is DPS. worse than lead storm. Lead storm. Um, yeah, but yeah, not I, by a lot. I would generally agree. It's a two point five like... times direct damage, and you get a bit faster. A missile velocity one point five times missile velocity. Um, in exchange, you lose have your area damage and like most of your aoe radius and you have uh minus 72 max ammo and times 0.75 uh max size uh so generally i think the trade-off between this and lsls is that you get to take the weak point mod um, and you get more dps on weak points and you get more stun because of your tier 5 stun mod um but you don't get ignition and it's not quite as responsive. Yeah, this is like the upside is potentially better than Leadstorm. Leadstorm, you can do bigger damage with this, um, and it does it does retain some you know, it retains some AOE, although that's not a big deal. So it's kind of like it's less consistent than Leadstorm. Leadstorm, and you can't just immediately start using it the same way in all situations. Mm -hmm. um, because of the travel time and like the way the missiles move is a bit awkward. You're not always going to have weak point hits set up, but when you do, you can uh, kill stuff pretty, pretty quick. Somewhat yeah. faster than Lead Storm. Lead Storm, not like insane burst compared to some burst year options, but still fast. And like I don't know. I guess this is a C tier, probably. I feel like it's. I think I, I think I would put it into B personally. It's like. I don't think it's so much worse than LSLS that it's into the lighter tanks category, personally. Yeah. Um, and it's I think it's also important to note that this is like one of those overclocks that does a lot of things worse than the base hurricane. It's like if you're taking it for grunt clear, don't. Uh, it's hurricane is really good at grunt clear normally, but it provides another valuable niche for a gunner primary to have. Yeah. Um, Rocket Barrage, next. This one's new. I think it's a lot of fun, but I don't think it's very good. Um, yeah, I don't either. I think that, like, my initial impression was, this is pretty dang good, and then I played with it a bit more, and I, mm, it's not that good. Yeah. It's, yeah. like, it's okay. I think it is, um, honestly, sometimes it feels kind of ammo inefficient. It's not that flexible. Yeah. And, like, your effective range is pretty limited. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's kind of good at abusing the tier five stun mod, but like just in in terms of how it responds to player input, I guess it's a bit worse than other overclocks because it's it's very like spray. I guess it's you lose a lot of control um, in exchange for close quarters effectiveness um but it's not a amazing trade-off for gunner to make 
Um, and you can also spec it into like single target DPS if you want, and it has more DPS than JFH, but not very sustainably, and it has worse ammo economy. Um, yes. I The way that I would put personally put this is, this is an overclock that is... Um, like plasma burster missiles, it is uh, it is fun and it is it can be good at both single target and clearing out groups, but it doesn't do those things quite as flexibly. It's much worse at range and it has kind of worse ammo economy. Yeah. So it's I generally would... like a worse version of a similar niche than plasma burster missiles. Yeah, yeah. Um I think it's like low C tier, maybe middle C tier personally. Yeah. Um okay, next. Salvo module. I think this one is really overrated personally. Um the shotgun effect that it has, which is the only thing it does. There's no downside. Um it's kind of not a great way to spend your ammo in my opinion, because a lot of the time you don't get direct hits with it. Um, and the plus four, plus four to AOE and direct damage doesn't really make up for it. Um, I see yeah, some. I mean, it, it's it's kind of like, if I remember correctly, it um, you're able to charge the shots faster than you would actually fire them. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a rate of fire upside in exchange for like a lot of inaccuracy. Yeah. Um, I mean, it is. You can just choose to tap fire the missiles, and then it's like a normal hurricane. And then so you, you can direct arthritis. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I it's, I guess this is C because you can't yeah. really say it's, it is giving you something over base. Yes, I, I think that's but something that's not very strong though. In like most yeah. situations, you're not, you don't really want to be doing it. But there are some that it, that it is okay in, and uh, Salvo is okay in those situations. I think you really want to take tier one C with this though. I see people running it with like tier one damage for. Unloading yeah. into I mean, you, you can let it. You can use it for single target like that, but you end up good. losing more damage against groups a lot of the time. Yeah. Okay, we're done with gunner primaries. On to secondaries. Starting with the bulldog, we have chain hit for the bulldog. Um, I don't think this overclock is is very good at all. Uh, I think it suffers from the same problem as the other chain hit weapon where a lot of the yeah. time where you're shooting weak points it's like it hits something that you don't care about shooting at all both sabata and bulldog care a lot about hitting weak points and when you ricochet off a weak point you probably won't hit another weak point uh, sometimes yeah. you do if it's hitting a bug behind the bug that you shot but pretty frequently you don't yeah uh, and you can also you can take this with a tier 3 explosion and neurotoxin for like a weird crowd clear build but it's Completely outclassed by magic bullets, um, and it's also not very strong at all. Yeah, um, it's like it's it's like approximately equivalent to base. I think there's yeah. not many situations where it's much stronger. Um, next, we have homebrew powder. This is unique among the homebrew overclocks in that it rolls from uh, seventy five percent damage to two hundred percent damage, uh, which averages out to be one hundred forty percent damage. Um, I think it's like the strongest of the homebrew overclocks, and if you take a damage mod, it doesn't miss any breakpoints. Yeah, but... it's the strongest, and it's also the most fun because yes. it, you feel like you're gambling more because the variance is bigger <laughs> and it's a a slower rate of fire weapon. Yeah. Um, and like hitting those two hundred percent feels really good. Yeah, I would personally put this in C. Yeah, I, I think it, it it would be fair to put it in equivalent to base, but I would put it in C. Yes, I I agree. I think it's like you don't miss breakpoints that often, and the variants can feel bad sometimes, but generally, I think the high rolls outweigh their low rolls. Um, yeah. Next, volatile bullets. This monster, um, you deal three hundred percent more damage, or sorry, you deal four times damage to enemies that are on fire in exchange for 10 damage. Um, it it deals a lot of damage. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's potentially more than 
plus 300% as well if the enemy is fire yes. vulnerable, because all the extra damage is fire damage. Yes, as, which is especially relevant for Spitballers. You get to one-shot Spitballers on a weak point hit, which is pretty absurd. Um, you also one-shot Goo Bombers if they're lit with a hit to the sack. Um, you, like, four-shot Bulks if you hit the weak points. Um, it's amazing versus Praetorians. You kill them in three shots, and even against oppressors who have a massive fire resistance, it's still like really, it's really still good single damage. target. Yeah, it's still double damage. Um Volta Bullets is is really, really insane single target. Uh I think it's like a very easy S tier to me. Yeah. It is I don't think it's like one of the best S tiers, but it's yes. definitely up there. Yeah, I would agree. It's not super competing with these, but it's it's very strong still. One well, of the strongest in the game, in fact. Um, okay, next we have Six Shooter. Uh, this one gives you just two more max size and two rate of fire and like six max ammo in, in exchange for decreasing your spread uh, and slightly longer reload, which doesn't matter because Bulldog has a okay anim animation cancel. Um, I think Six Shooter is like, it's okay. Um, I think it's very clearly better than the base gun. But not by a ton because base bulldog isn't amazing for doing much aside from like just killing normal Mactera um, and the occasional tri jaw and like killing a guard. Yeah, uh, well, I think I like this more than you, but mm. kind of the the comparison point between like this and um, I mean elephant rounds the next coming up. They both do they're both doing kind of similar things in different ways. Mm. I, I think that it depends on the situation and who you're playing with. I think it is nice to be able to quickly kill um, more Mactera spawn. I mm -hmm. think that Elephant Rounds is better for shooting a try draw, yes. but not that much better because, like, this has higher. It's a higher attention cost because you have to shoot twice, but not mm -hmm. that much higher because you get those two shots off pretty quick. Yeah, to me, like. I've become more positive on elephant rounds lately, I think, but like I would call both six shoot and elephant rounds like fairly close to each other. Um and it's hard for me to to pick which one is actually better. I think the one that I like the feel of more is definitely six shooter because I hate elephant rounds huge uh -huh. recoil. Uh-huh. Um I'm 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 actually pretty flipped on that, actually. Uh, I prefer Elephant Rounds by a pretty decent amount. Um, I feel like Gunner really benefits from being able to switch to the secondary for like a second and then going straight back to firing the primary weapon uh, because Gunner primaries are strong. Um, and Elephant Rounds is really nice for killing like one try draw. Um, I think it's a bit better like, against Menaces, Spitballers, um, tanky targets in general, which is typically what I'll want my Bulldog to do uh, when I'm taking it without volatile bullets. Um, but I, I, I think Six Shooter is also like decent overall. Um, I don't like having to shoot it twice, uh, but it's not terrible when you do have to do that. Uh, and it, it is nice against uh, Mactera and when you, have a, when you have a team that isn't as good as dealing with them. Um, I th I think I can like accept putting both in C. Sure, I think that like well, the, this is kind of just a a difference in preference. I think, um, but I will say I think elephant rounds should have a built-in armor break modifier. I want to be able to body shot acid spares with it more easily. Yes, I agree. Missing that body shot breakpoint feels really bad, especially because like you or I I at least take. Tier 5 Mirror Toxin, so that sometimes I kill Bastard Spitters with Body Shot. But that's like, that feels really awful. Yeah. Um, Is the coin flip? Yeah. Um, okay. Put them both in C. For now. Um, Magic Bullets next. I think this is an overclock that feels like pretty good in vanilla and really bad in modded. This does um, get a lot worse in modded, yeah. yeah. The 
Ricochet upon hitting the ground uh, synergizes with tier 3 explosive ammo and tier 5 near toxin. So you get like these near toxin clouds. Um, but the I think it's because like the random chance of the the neurotoxin applying to yeah. groups of enemies you hit is much more punishing when the enemies are faster and more numerous. Yes, yeah. And also the explosion radius is not that big. Um it's like like 1.5 meters or something like that. Um and spending your time out with the bulldog out like shooting the ground and hoping to proc neurotoxin. Uh, without like any sort of CC, um, when you have a set of primaries that are really good at killing enemies uh, and other options in the secondary slot, namely the coil gun, um, that kill crowds much more consistently, uh, I think it it doesn't feel amazing. I don't think it's bad per se. I have a solo with it on my channel, um, but I, I don't think it's it's very good. Uh, even in vanilla, it's not amazing. Like. It's nice and it, it it feels satisfying to shoot into a crowd and get the the ricochet and near toxin, but it's only good against really small amounts of enemies. And even then, it's not like it's not anything super impressive. Um, I think I'd put it in C. Yeah, I mean it. It probably doesn't deserve to be any lower than that. Yeah, I, I think it's better than baseball log, for sure. Uh, Especially because you can like just still shoot at enemies and stun them. Um, okay, next we're moving on to the Burt. Uh, we'll start with composite casings. This one is I can't even remember what this does. It's like thirty six ammo, right? And one more rate of fire. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, the rate of fire is kind of okay, but it it doesn't matter as much on the BRT because of how the how rate of fire works mm -hmm. with the bursts. I mean, it it is, it's better, but I feel like because compact mags is coming up in a little bit, I feel like this one maybe deserves to be an equivalent to base. Yeah, yeah, I I can understand that. Yeah. Um, I think full, full chamber. Full chamber is definitely, definitely equivalent to base. Yeah. It's like That's, one it more. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> yeah. It's like. Yeah. What do you do? You don't do anything. You do one more damage, I suppose. Um, next, we have Compact Mags. This one is, like, one of the better ammo overclocks, I think. Like, 84 max ammo is a big number. Um, losing the rate of fire yeah. doesn't hurt as much because the bird is a wacky gun. Um, yeah, it's, it's looking at the rate of fire, like, from, from base you would expect that you'd be losing like one third of your damage output, but it's it's much less than that. Yeah. That's um, how the bursts work. And that also lets you take tier four weak point damage much more yeah. comfortably, uh, which is actually pretty nice. You end up having a in general like more damage overall. Um but it's not like anything crazy. The bird isn't amazing DPS at base. Um it, I think it's... this is a, a nice, comfortable take for a normal mission. I think that it is... it. I, I like using this with, like, Big Bertha because it means you have more ammo, which means uh, if you want to take Big Bertha without mag size, it's easier to just, like, shoot Big Bertha till it's dry, switch to this, shoot it while born ready, reloads Big Bertha, and just do that repeatedly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you'll be able to use the BRT more so you can keep that cycle up for longer. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh I think it's a like I could see this being B, but I don't think it's as strong as the other stuff in the B tier. Uh um, yeah. Yeah. I think like you, you could this is like high C in my opinion, but I, I think it is definitely one of the best ammo overclocks in the game yeah. easily. Yeah, for sure. The downside is minimal and it gives you a lot of BRT ammo, but it's it's not like an immense upside. Uh huh. Uh um, in contrast, we have experimental rounds next. This is like a huge plus nine direct damage at the cost of six magazine size and 30 max ammo. Um, it gives you a lot of damage. Uh, it's almost as much damage as lead spray, but it does take a lot of ammo from you. Um, 
I think we should talk about this in Lead Spray in conjunction because they're like kind of the yeah. same thing. Um, I mean, I'll say that I prefer Lead Spray, but I do think experimental rounds has reasons to exist because it's because you don't have accuracy penalties yes. with it. Yeah. Um, I think they're like approximately the same power level. Uh, Lead Spray does have a bit more direct damage, um, but not by much. It's like, um, and Experimental Rounds is a lot better at like killing spitballers from a range, at dealing with uh, menaces and whatnot. Um, Lead Spray is really nice for unloading into cryoed enemies and really close like Praetorians and Oppressors. I think they both have their niche and I think they're both like quite potent upgrades for the Burt. Um, I'd put them like both in B tier, personally. Uh, yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, next we have Electro Mindlets. I think this overclock gets maligned unjustly. Um, yes, Electro Mindlets is, it doesn't do enough damp. The electric effect does not like one shot grunts, but the slow is strong. You can apply it to a lot of enemies easily, it's consistent. Uh, you do it while also shooting through them with blow through. I think that I don't know. I think I would I would put this somewhat above magic bullets. I think yeah, that it yeah. is. I would agree. It's it's much better at handling grunt density than magic bullets. Uh, I, I yeah, think the major I, I think the easy take looking at it is that it's worse than magic bullets because you look at magic bullets and you say, well, the neurotoxin one shots common enemies and the electro mindless effect doesn't. Mm -hmm. But Electro Might and Let's Effect has no RNG involved with it, and it has a stronger slow. Yeah. Um, and I think both those things matter a lot. Yeah, I, I would agree. Uh, and it also, like, has a... It, it outputs a lot more of it at once compared to Magic Bullets, because each mine has yeah. a... Has like the if same enemy ability. density is high, you can affect a ton of enemies. They all get affected no matter what. Um... It barely penalizes your direct damage. It does the the mag size is noticeable, but yes. when you shoot enemies with it directly, they take almost the same damage as a normal BRT build would. Yes, yeah, I think it's a uh, it's like a high C tier. I think it's generally quite underrated. People, I would personally put this in B tier. Hmm. I uh, yeah, I I I can see a B tier pick. Hmm. I'm not sure it's quite as... I think part of the reason why is because I'm looking at the C tier and, like, I see lighter tanks and hydrogen ion additive and magnetic cooling unit in here when... Yeah, most of our C tier is, like, this is barely better. Well, some of it is, this is, like, barely better, and then some of it is lightweight cases and stronger plasma print. I feel like... Yeah, well, if it were up to me, lightweight cases would be up in B. <laughs> So, <laughs> I do okay. I I will put it in B. I feel like it does improve the like it is just a quite a big upgrade to the bird because uh, it's like it does quite a bit of uh, single target damage still. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Last micro flechettes. Uh, I think we both know where this is going. But for the viewers at home, micro flechettes halves your damage, uh, but doubles your magazine size and ammo pool. Um, it's what bad. does this accomplish? Nothing. It does nothing. You deal like the same DPS. You have the same total damage. Yes, you can use the stun mod more, but you deal no damage. Um. It's really bad at if, doing what the bird wants to do. What if instead of using the stun mod with micro flechettes, you took the stun mod on burning hell minigun and did <laughs> more damage while setting enemies on fire and stunning them? Yeah. What about that, huh? <laughs> or you remove the overclock and killed the enemy in front of you. Yeah. Um, it's really bad. I This like might be the worst overclock in the game. Um, has really no reason to exist. Um... Okay, moving on to the coil gun now. We'll start with Reatomizer. 
Reatomizer is not worse than nothing, but it belongs there because it's so janky. Yes, I agree. There's like two years of bug fixing related to this, and it like it's still kind of dysfunctional. Um, Unless something changed about this very recently, you're still able to shoot through a frozen enemy into a dreadnought, and it will apply the frozen visual effect to the dreadnought, but the dreadnought will not get frozen or stop moving. So you just have a dreadnought that looks like it's frozen, just walking around and attacking you for a bit. And there's also like stupid stuff where you can transfer heat from Doretta. You can transfer drugs. things infinitely. You can transfer arbitrary amounts of temperature to enemies from Doretta. Yeah, like or. You see that video from Split Central a while ago where he used a ton of cryobolts on Dor Doretta to make yes. Doretta extremely cold and then used yes. Reatomizer to instantly freeze any enemy he wanted. It's so yeah. stupid. It's so stupid. Um, and it is like nothing in normal situations. I think some status effects still get applied permanently when they're normally temporary status effects. Um, yeah. It's like, there are, no nowadays at least, back when it was introduced, like, steving a bulk or a dread was very dumb and would soft lock you um nowadays it's just like it does nothing for you uh it does nothing for you unless you engage in extremely degenerate strategies yes which are not good this is an overclock that should not exist <laughs> yes i agree i think it gets an honorary worse than nothing um remove this from the game uh okay next we have ultramagnetic coils uh this is a plus 5.5 meter trail radius and an extra second of trail duration. Um, I used to think this wasn't amazing, but recently my opinion has kind of shifted. Um, coil gun trail is actually pretty okay if you're shooting down grunts in a straight line. Um, and the extra second and extra radius of your trail makes it actually a lot easier to use versus a lot more situations. I think um, it's reasonably good. Yeah. I don't have any strong opinions about this. I think it's like C tier. It's not amazing, but it's pretty good. And the coil gun, it just like makes the coil gun do more coil gun things, which if you take tier four fear or tier three fear, sorry, uh, and tier five electricity, it's just like a very strong self-defense tool that also does decent grunt clear. Putting it in C. Okay, we have backfeeding module next. This is an ammo overclock that does not have a downside, but it also does not really have an upside, in my opinion. Um, it's like a ridiculous amount of ammo, like 320 extra ammo in exchange for 20 less damage. Um, and neither of these things matter because in a typical like 22213 or 32213 coil gun build, you will never run out of ammo, and you will almost never take advantage of the direct damage. Um, I think this is like the same thing as the base gun, personally. Yeah, pretty much. I, you can contrive situations where those things matter, but realistically, it's you don't care whether you have it or you don't. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. Uh, next, the mole. The mole, the mole, the mole. Uh, this one reduces your charge speed by like 20%, but in exchange, you get 150 extra damage every time your coil gun shot penetrates a wall. Um, and it also has way, uh, way higher penetration, so you get to cleave through more terrain, uh, which is kind of funny to see like after a mission. Uh, just like pulling up your terrain scanner and seeing the mole leaving huge lines across the mini map. Um, I think this overclock is reasonably good. Um, like most of the time, you just use it like the base coil gun, but sometimes there's a like a nice opportunity to stack up two balls and you just get to like one shot two Praetorians, uh, which is cool. Um, most of the time, I don't think it's like amazing. Uh, I don't think the, the strategies involving spending 20 minutes, like, contriving the perfect situation to get 20 blow-throughs to one-shot the dread are, like, good. They're funny, but most of the time this is just, like, a, a slight upgrade to base. 
Yeah, well, I mean, it's the damage is pretty significant, but yeah, I would say it's not normally like it's not something that really defines your build. Mm -hmm. It just makes you better contextually against enemies through walls or tanky enemies. Yeah, yeah. I think this is like a like another C tier. It yeah, might be some like, people would definitely put yeah. it in B. I I would personally leave it in C though. So I think I saw Axis put it in like S tier in his tier list, which is a little funky to me. Some people really like this overclock, uh, but I think most of the time it's just like it's just the base glow gun. I think it's I think it's pretty good, but not like exceptionally good. Yeah. Um, speaking of exceptionally good, next we have Hellfire. Uh, this one reduces your ammo by 200 and makes your charge, uh, makes you charge slower and makes the trail last two seconds shorter. But in exchange, your trail lights everything inside of it on fire, um, which just like kills everything smaller than a guard, um, especially in conjunction with electricity and fear. Um, the DOT has a lot of time to take effect, and it just turns the yeah, gun into like... a stupid grunt-killing machine. Yeah. I mean, like, realistically, the fear is the best mod on that tier for the coil gun. Mm -hmm. It's especially the best mod for Hellfire. Yes. And with those things combined, it's, uh, I don't know. I, th I think maybe, like, you could make a case for this being maybe not the absolute best at clearing crowds in the game, but probably the the overclock that changes your grunt clearing or like, I mean, grunt veterans as well. And anything that's not super tanky will just get like cleaved out by one yeah. shot of this if they're remotely near each other. Yes. Uh, and also, it the fear effect affects Praetorians and Maxterra and every other enemy in the game. And also, you can still just spam, like, single charge shots. Um, I think Hellfire, like, might be just the straight-up best personal safety overclock in the game, um, just because of how potent that fear effect is. Coal Gun Fear is, like, really stupidly busted. Um, and Hellfire, I think, lands very solidly in the S tier, in no small part because of it. Uh, okay, next, triple tech chamber. Um, this one lets you shoot two extra charge shots uh, in exchange for a slightly longer charge speed and a 0.5 second longer reload, which is actually very significant because um, the coil gun has no reload cancel. Um, however, this does let you put out three electricity trails, which are like the main thing that base coil gun does. Um, so I think it's just like a pretty decent upgrade over the base coil gun. Yeah, I think this is this is one of my favorite overclocks in the game. It's just pretty good though. Yeah. Uh compared to like UMC, it's uh it's a little bit worse at Greg Clear, I think, because of the smaller trail size and the longer reload, uh, it's a bit less good at putting out sustained fear. And um, compared to the mole, it's a little bit worse at single target because you spend more ammo if you want to do a full charge. Um, but I think it's like a it's like a happy medium between the two. It does pretty good crowd control. It does pretty good single target if you really want that, um, and it also covers a pretty wide area. I think it's like a like a high C. Yep. Okay. Next. Compact ammo. We have moved on to the scout. This is for the GK2. Uh, this is a plus five mag size, if I remember correctly. And you've got a little bit less recoil. Um, I think the GK2 at base is not very good. Uh, the recoil penalty is nice. But or the recoil reduction is nice, but it's not like anything to write home about. And extra mag size isn't too impactful because the GK2 is 
not super pressed for mag size in the first place um yeah i mean i i would personally say that the best of these two effects is the recoil down but i do mm -hmm. also think if i'm using a gk2 with anything but ai stability engine or bullets of mercy i'm taking the tier three uh recoil mod anyways mm. yeah because it also affects your bloom so i don't really care about that very much i yes. think this is Really Same unimpactful. Thing. Yeah. Um, Gastro Redding is a plus one rate of fire overclock uh, in exchange for... All right, and you also get a little bit shorter reload time, I think. Um, neither are super important. Um, the plus one rate of fire is nice, but it's still like just base GK2. This is, yeah, this is probably better than compact ammo if uh -huh. you really want into the get into the nitty-gritty, but... It's like, not by enough to yeah, make a big difference. Not very much. Next. Homebrew powder is sad. The most disappointing homebrew powder overclock in the game. Um, same as the other greens, 1.1 times damage on average. Uh, you have to take the ammo, or you have to take the damage up to not miss the Swarmer breakpoint. Um, it's very sad. Like, I feel like honorarily, I want to put it into the worst than nothing here. It's just like... It just does nothing. I wouldn't go that far, but I'm not <laughs> going to stop you either. <laughs> I hate this overclock. It's, it's so dumb. I've had people argue with me that this is the best GK2 overclock. No. So it can go there. No, no, That's don't fine. even stop talking. Stop talking. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, next, we have overclock fire mechanism. Uh, this is a significant plus three rate of fire, but it also doubles your recoil, um, which. If you like try to use this without both tier three A and tier five A, you will not hit any shots. Um, with both, it's like it's fine, I guess. Um, it does a little more damage than if you had just taken tier five B. Um, it's like the same controllability. It's okay. I don't think it's very good, but it's kind of goofy to like. Yeah, the battle I, I do. I do sometimes run this without floating barrel, um, just to run it with battle frenzy and try to chain kills on weak enemies, which is not a very good thing to do. But I do think it's fun. I think this is probably like a C tier, I guess. Yeah, I I would agree. It's a damage, it's a damage up basically. Yeah, it's like fine. Um, okay, bolts of mercy now. I think this overclock is not in a great place anymore. Um. Like, comparing this to AISE, uh, AI Stability Engine, it's like, the only time you're getting more DPS is when you take both Rate of Fire mods and you IFG and mag dump into a freight. Um, that's okay. Uh, it does a lot more damage when you do have status effects applied. Um, if you're pairing this with, like, a Cryobolt Secondary or Taser Bolts or whatever, uh, it can be pretty fun to like shred through a bunch of enemies with status effects, but I don't think it's amazing, mostly because Scout has a very mobile playstyle, and like hunkering down to apply a status effect to one enemy uh, is usually not amazing. Well, like I broadly agree with what you're saying, but I do think that it is still a substantial overclock for like compared to the base gun. Mm -hmm. I would personally put this in B. Yeah, I, I can understand that. I think it's like very heavily outclassed by AI Stability Engine, but I don't think it's... Yeah, AI I mean, I Stability Engine weak. is better, but... If, you know, Bullets of Mercy doesn't need to be totally judged based on uh, its competition. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. Okay. Speaking of, here is AI Stability Engine. Um, removes recoil, plus 50%. Weak point bonus. Uh, in exchange, you got two less rate of fire and one less direct damage. Um, both of those damage downs are completely negated by the huge 50% weak point bonus. Um, take this as like 2 1 2 2 2, and it shreds anything with a weak point. Uh, it's like the best single target DPS. Scout has in his primary kit, um, and because it has no recoil, it is amazing at sniping things down from a range. Um, I think, like, 
bringing a later overclock into the discussion here, but I think like in almost all situations, I would prefer this compared to hipster, um, because it does it does the the job of like getting to shoot everything pretty competently, but especially doing a lot of damage to large single targets. Um, and it's grown on me over time. I think I've had like a, a rough time adjusting to the fact that like the GK two has a good option now, um, but it 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 does scout things pretty well. It kills web spitters, at spitters, pretty decently. Um, it kills Bactera pretty well, not as well as the M1K does in general, but it's pretty good against them, and it is amazing against like breeders and spitballers and Praetorians and uh, oppressors. I think it's a very strong overclock. Yeah, I, you will not find a single word of disagreement with me for anything that you just said. I think it's it's very good. I think this is an A tier overclock. Yes, I would agree. It's like, it's very strong. Um, next, electrifying reload. This is a polarizing one. I find. Um, it does a lot of electricity damage on a lot of grunts. If you're into that, um. And I think that can be good in like pubbing type scenarios, um, but it is markedly worse because of the minus 10 magazine size um, and minus 60 max ammo. It is markedly worse at taking down high value targets, which I think are what Scout typically cares the most about. Um, and if you have a team that relies on the Scout killing those targets, uh, it, it can be pretty punishing. But if you just like want to take it into a has five pub and like shoot all the grunts once and then kill everything or not kill everything as your doofus teammates kill a bunch of status effect enemies, uh, it's like it's pretty strong, I think. Yeah, I mean it. It's better to specialize more towards scout strengths, but it's it's what it does is still it's good at doing it. Yes, I think for like, I think for modded difficulties, this is like the same thing as base. Um. Or maybe C tier. I think for like vanilla, it's like arguably A tier. I think I'm happy to split the difference and put it into B. I was going to say B anyways, so let's okay. go with that. Cool. Um next. We are moving on to the M1000, the best weapon in the game by feel. Uh and class identity, in my opinion. Starting with hover clock. I know you like this one a lot. Uh just lets you hover yeah, if, when you, if you charge. If you let me control the discussion here, I will just say put this in S. You shouldn't <laughs> let me do this because it doesn't actually deserve to be an S, but that is what I would do. It is very fun. Um, I really don't like the way it's like there's a uh, host client disconnect. Yeah, I don't like, I don't like the client side behavior, um, but I, I love hover clock. It's, it's still very fun though. Uh, and it lets you like not take special powder and still not care about fall damage, which is nice because your secondary gets to like be more of a weapon. Um, that being said, I don't think it's like crazy strong or anything. Um, the extra mobility it provides is cool, but Scout doesn't need it that much, um, and it doesn't practically help your combat very much at all. Um, I think in most situations, like. You're getting very, very little benefit from this during the storm itself. Um, at least compared to just like grappling away and shooting at the same things again. I think it's like still a B tier though, because it provides so much quality yeah. of life. Um, and it's still like quite strong. I think the M1 is nice in like bad scramble situations as well, because you, yeah. like, you should be staying alive as Scout regardless, but it, it becomes easier to do so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And I think the M1000 is, like, at base, a very good gun. So, like, anything that just makes it a little better is very good. Um, speaking of, minimal clips is plus 2 max size and minus 0.2 reload. Or times 1.25 max size, clip size. Um, this is, like, it's pretty good. Uh, the M1000 really likes having extra clip size because you get to kill one more very high priority target per clip, or more if you take tier 3 max size. Um, yeah, it's just like, it's just a solid overclock. 
Um, it's very nice if you're trying to be a hip hip fire with uh, M Link Thousand for like blow through grunt clear or whatever. Um, it's just generally very very good. I think it's like another. I, I don't think I like it that much, but I like it okay. Okay. So you're thinking like C. B? I would call it like high C low B. Yeah, I I think I think I'm I'm more partial to B here. Put it in B. Uh, next, active stability system. This is like another overclock that's just M1000 but slightly better. Um, it removes your uh, focus penalty entirely, which I don't know why they did this for the M1000 and not the auto cannon. Um, you also get a little bit more focus speed, it's like 20%, um, but you get longer reloads, but the reloads aren't that important because you have pretty strong animation cancels. Um, it's, I think this is just a very solid overclock. It makes, a, uh, it makes focus shots a lot safer uh, and quicker. Yeah, it also... It, you know, with hmm. your damage up focus shots, you can be like one-shotting try draws and acid spitters and whatever targets that you would really like to get rid of. And then with this, you do it just a bit faster. I mm -hmm. think that this, the speed that this allows you to focus shot at is like right at the level where it's comfortable to finish aiming to a new target by the time the focus yes. shot is fully charged, which is like ideal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I, I guess it should be said for the benefit of someone who might not know why we're talking about M1K being better than GK2, just as a general rule. Um, a lot of what that has to do with is it hits very nice breakpoints for killing uh, enemies that you frequently want to get rid of as scout. Like a lot of the time, scout's job is cleaning up enemies that aren't insanely tanky but cause a lot of problems, like mm. acid spitters, web spitters, uh, Mactera spawn, Mactera try draws, um, sting tails now as well. M1K yeah. is also good against. And, and a lot of those enemies you can one-shot with the M1K if you're taking damage mods. And that kind of creates this dynamic where like the GK2 can have higher raw DPS than the M1K. But because the M1K, whenever you are going to shoot at a new enemy, you have to spend some time moving your aim over to that enemy. And on the M1K, while you're doing that, you're you get to charge up the focus shot, so you're basically banking damage for once your reticle is actually on the enemy. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, a lot of the time, your actual kill times will be better with the M1K versus these sorts of enemies, because like while you're aiming, you are charging a shot, whereas with the GK2, while you're aiming to the new target, nothing's happening. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And also the Tier 5... Uh... Mods are very strong, and the GK2 yeah. doesn't have anything like that. Yeah, M1K stun mod blows GK2 stun mod out of the water. Yeah, and Fear is also very nice against Mactera clouds and whatnot. Um, I don't think active stability system is like such a strong upside that it belongs in the A tier next to all these other overclocks. I feel like it's slightly better than hoverclock and minimal eclipse. Um, yeah, but not by too much. Uh, and it's yeah like again it's a situation where like the end package is really good but the the overclock itself is not providing most of that most of that yeah. is just coming from the base weapon yeah the base m1k is just is just really good um i think active stability system is like a high b tier as a result uh next hipster bit of a controversial one um mostly because i don't think this overclock is very good. Um, it kind of turns the M1000 into like a completely different weapon, uh, removing most of its breakpoints by reducing your direct damage by like 17, but you get a pretty massive amount of extra ammo um, and plus your rate of fire. Um, I think against most the tar of the targets that Scout cares about the most, um, Hipster makes the gun worse. Um, it's also not better than just like blow through M1000 builds for a grunt clear, uh, unless you take tier four blow through, but then you're losing even more uh, high value target DPS. Um, 
Yeah. I, I, I feel a little better about this than you do, but I definitely don't like it that much. And I think that, like, it, it matters a lot how, like, specialized and coordinated your team is. Mm -hmm. If you're playing on a good team as Scout, your role is, like I was saying a bit earlier, you're, you're, like, you're doing objectives and you're picking off, like, specific problem enemies. You're not clearing out all the grunts because the, the driller with sticky fuel is doing that mm -hmm. or the, you know, the, the gunner is doing that or whatever. Yeah. And, like, you care less about the really big single targets that you help with them sometimes. You care more about the enemies that have, like, annoying behaviors and attacks. Yeah. Um, I and do think that if you're if you're playing with like randoms or kind of solo, but mostly if you're playing with randoms, hipster feels better mm -hmm. than it would otherwise. But it's still like not. It's never really my number one pick. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. I think it's like I I said it's worse than nothing in my last video, but I think it's just like kind of just a completely different weapon. It's kind of competing with the GK two for a niche where you get a bit performance uh, like a bit more performance across the board generally a little bit less attention cost um at least if you're not yeah. like try hard aiming for every like if you point. were if you were to comp compare this to ai stability engine this has less dps than ai stability engine but you can stun things more consistently when you need to with the stun mod mm -hmm. um and that's like most of the dynamic, really. Yeah, uh, you also get like a bit better armor break. You feel a lot yeah. better about like web spitters and uh, and the sting tails and like you you could take it with blow through. If you take it with blow through though, then you're missing uh, the weak point mod, and Which, that yeah. is not good for hipster because you're like hipster. The the better single target damage is really what you want. Mm -hmm. uh, like. People sometimes say the actual good thing about hipster is blow through builds, and it's not true. Blow through mm -hmm. builds on hipster are a meme. Uh, well, let me be specific. Focus shot blow through builds on hipster are a meme. Yes. Focus shotting on hipster is just like, I want to have a billion ammo and clear a bunch of grunts, which yeah. is not really something that you should be focusing on doing as scout. And it's if you are like doing not, it, not you even. should do it without focus shots. It'll be less ammo efficient, but who cares? You have plenty of ammo. Mm -hmm. you, there is no situation where you need to do that many focus shots that are able to pop grunts. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. Uh, I think like even just like one three one 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 base M one K builds are completely fine for that purpose. Um, yeah, if if you're using just like a normal M1K without overclocks, you're already able to clear plenty of grunts with the M1K if that's what you want to do. Yes, yeah. It's it's still not a an amazing thing for Scout to be doing in an ideal setting, but maybe like you're doing single player or you're pubbing and you think that's like a nice thing to have. Yeah. And you have more flexibility that way compared to Hipster because if Hipster does that, it loses some breakpoints. Yeah, I would agree. I think like I think putting this in worse than nothing. I, I did say it's worse than nothing in my previous video, but I feel like it's kind of unfair because it it does a thing that I think is worse than M1K, but it's kind of a separate niche entirely. Um, yeah, it, it's a fine niche to have. It, I, it's not as good as like active stability system or hover clock, popping try jaws with focus shots, but like it's still fine broadly. Yeah, I, like yeah. I would put hipster in C. Okay, okay. Throw him a bone. We'll put it in C. Uh, I think it's like... I think it's worse than the base weapon most of the time, but uh, it, it, has a, it has a niche. Um, and I guess that's worth something. Um, next, EFS. This is kind of like Focus Hipster, except it hits all the breakpoints still. Um, or you get to take Magsize with it, which is really nice. Uh, so typically yeah, it'll like, like hmm? you get to well, I mean sorry, you can finish what you were saying. Okay. I was just gonna say like okay. uh, you, get, you get nice breakpoints while taking other mods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's basically what I was gonna say. What what, what I was going to say. Um you can take it with like one three one 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 and you get blow through 
value versus grunts and a ton of ammo and you still kill like all the relevant HVTs in uh in one focus drop and they die to electricity before the stun wars off. Um you can take it with, with like two three two uh two three two two one or two three two one two or whatever you want in the last two tiers. Um and the electricity finishes off the enemies while you get still can take mag size, which is pretty nice. Um I think for like vanilla, honestly, one three one 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 electric electrocuting focus routes might be like arguably the best M one K build because you just have so much ammo, um, and you can waste it on grunts if you want if you're in danger or and you still get like pretty good times to kill on most relevant targets. Um, I think EFS is really strong. Uh, is it A tier? Probably not. Yeah, I I think this is a B tier overclock. Yeah, uh, and it, it is especially like compared to active stability system uh, and hover clock, which both have like X factors where one of them is safer and deals more DPS and kills enemies faster, and the other one gives you a lot of mobility and extra survivability. Um, I think this is is not like clearly better, um, but minimal clips is a little dated in comparison to EFS now. Okay. Next, super cooling chamber. Um, this used to be really bad. Now it's still not great, but I don't think it's terrible either. Uh, it's like you it's okay. Up. Yeah, it's okay. Um, one hundred fifty percent extra focus start multiplier. Um, you got a three times midpoint bonus, but in exchange you have a smaller clip. Uh, it's like thirty percent of your clip is gone, and you have thirty percent less ammo. And you have 40% slower focus speed, and you can't move while focusing. Um, I like this on Sabo for hitting weak points that are kind of hard to hit, and you only have to hit them twice compared to like active stability system where you have to th hit them three times. Um, it's kind of nice for like bursting down tankier enemies like that if they're harder to hit, but its DPS is like more or less equivalent to active stability system without any of the mobility upsides and with a lower clip size and a lower max uh, a lower max ammo pool um i think this is like the weakest m1000 overclock um i think it's i think it's worse than nothing in almost every scenario but it still does have a niche as like a bot killer and um yeah it has situations where it's nice it those situations are not super worth it mm -hmm. but i personally would not put this in worse than nothing i think it like just barely out of there yes I, I think you could very convincingly argue that it's worse than nothing i think in most situations it, most situations it is but it does have a niche uh and we put hipster on c so we're putting this in approximately equivalent um okay moving on to the drac first up we have aggressive venting uh, i know you're a big fan of this um, I like it because it takes the drac out of the drac. Uh, you just get a fire AoE when you overheat, which the drac is very fast to accomplish. Um, I think this is a like one of Scout's best crowd clear options if you really want it. Uh, like with IFGs and yeah, chokes. In, in solo, this is quite nice. Yes, it's very good for safety because the the AoE fear um is pretty potent. Um, I think in teams like. You really don't need that. Um, and even in solo, you can really just, a lot of the time, if you're like in a more open cave, you can just run away from the enemies. Um, uh, but if your goal is to kill a bunch of grunts, I think this is like one of the best ways on Scout to do it. Even if you are slightly gimping your high value target killing capabilities, I think the safety that aggressive venting provides and the pretty decent credit clear is, is pretty worth it. Uh, where would you say this should go? I would put this in B. Yeah, I, I, I don't disagree. Um, I think it's like definitely weaker than most M1K builds, and it provides a less valuable niche, but it improves the drag pretty drastically. Um, okay, thermal liquid coolant. This one is just a bit more cooling, a bit less heat per shot. Um, it's okay. It's like I don't notice this at all. 
yeah, it's basically just the base track. Um, yeah, the bit better sustain if you want to shoot into grunts a bunch, I guess. Uh, but generally, just not great. Um, impact deflection minus two rate of fire, but your bullets bounce. Um, people really like taking this with tier four plasma splash. But if you do that, you are specking entirely into grunt clear. Um, because you lose weak point damage, uh, and the splash is not good against enemies that are on weird geometries or are in the sky, as high value targets tend to be. Um, also, I think like electricity is just stronger because the Drax electricity mod is is very strong in general. Um, I don't think this overclock is amazing. I think it's like better than nothing, but. I think this overclock got done supremely dirty because <laughs> it used to bounce twice. Um, it also used to be a clean with no rate of fire penalty, and that matters too. But it bouncing twice was a big deal. Let you get like way more value out of this. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, I felt like kind of understanding of it losing the two bounces. But now I'm like, give it, just give it two bounces back, man. Yeah. Especially now that it has minus two rate of fire. It still wouldn't be like that good. It would be like nice in a niche. Right yeah. now, it's like barely better than normal Drac when mm -hmm. you're doing the thing it's meant for and it's worse otherwise. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. And the thing it's good for is like not a good thing for Scott to be doing. Um, yeah, I think it's like C tier. Um, I think you could like argue that it's approximately equivalent, but I feel like it's fun enough that I'll bump it up to C. Um, next, we have Rewired mod. This gives you approximately 2 billion ammo in exchange for overheating much faster. Um, you really want to take tier 5 manual heat dump with this, because otherwise you're forced to shoot all your bullets, uh, which is oftentimes unsafe. Um, I think this like overclock is not good at all. Uh, I think it's like actively bad. Um, the sustainability downside that it gives you is really not worth the honestly excessive ammo. Uh, I feel like Dracket Base already kind of struggles at running out of ammo. Um, and Rewiring Mod certainly makes that much worse because you can't shoot as long uh, and you can't. And yeah, and you have way, way, way more ammo. Um, I just don't think it's very yeah. good. I think you could put it in worse than nothing. I would put it in equivalent base. It yeah. definitely is like an upside that does not matter. Yes. It's kind of fun for spamming uh, hot beat, but yeah, it's not, not really worth anything. Um, next, Overtune Particle Accelerator. I fucking hate this overclock. It is awful. It yeah, it's bad. Yeah, it completely gimps your accuracy um, and makes you worse at sustain. And you can't like hit anything more than four feet in front of you in exchange for like double damage, but... It's it's literally only good at shooting Praetorians in the ass and nothing else. And it's and not there even are that better options that, for scouts yeah. at doing that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just not not good. Um I've outlined more reasons for this in my previous video, so if you're mad at me and lazy, go watch that and then leave an angry comment. Um Shield Battery Booster. This used to be in a pretty bad place. Now I think it's not still not amazing, but I think it does have a niche. Um the survivability upside it provides you is like kind of insane you take so much less chip damage um and the significant extra damage is also pretty good feeling but you your heat management is way worse so it does yeah. support the like the run and gun play style of scout where you get in shoot a few bullets and then get out um and it ups your survivability by a very considerable amount um it's definitely better off than it used to be. I do think, I mean, the heat management thing is what like often gets ignored in conversations about shield battery booster, especially mm -hmm. before, and I think now still somewhat. Generating 50% more heat per shot and only cooling at half the normal rate is really punishing. Yeah. It basically yeah. means that like you have to choose between either taking the like cooling and heat related mods so you have like a, so your sustain is not so bad, 
or you have to uh just like go all in on like doing damage in a very short period of time because you overheat very quickly and you also cool very slowly mm -hmm. yeah it it is better to just accept that your heat will be bad but mm -hmm. i think it's kind of annoying yeah i agree uh the sustain does really hurt it um and especially because Drac is kind of annoying to use versus high value targets um like and you can't even spec this for grunt clear that well because you don't actually get to shoot grunts that much um but it does really support the get in get out play style that scout typically wants to play uh and it also augments your survivability by like quite a bit um I could see an argument for this being in B, but I think it's like high C, personally. I'm fine with that. I do think like I mean the projectile velocity is very nice as well as the damage. Mm -hmm. I think it being in either C or B is fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll put it in B for now. I feel like we need a little bit of extra stuff there. Uh, and I think it's I think the survivability is actually kind of like insane. Uh, Scout doesn't need it that often but if you're like playing a difficulty that you find hard it is really nice to just be able to shrug off chip and like fall damage and whatever um okay next thermal exhaust feedback this recently got a change uh, now it provides up to 12 extra damage um scaling in intervals of three for every 10 percent heat you have above 60 percent um i think it's pretty strong i think it's better now than it used to be um because specifically it has worse sustain against grunts and whatnot um because you want to be at high heat um but it it does a lot better job of killing those targets that scout really cares about killing um like with 3 2 1 1 2 you can kind of shoot out bursts at max heat and you get pretty good mag terror dps you can one mag the spitballer now um yeah i think it's pretty strong overall yeah it's just it's it is simply good yes i think it's i think you could probably put this either in b or a honestly I, like in terms of how much it improves the drag it takes the drag from like a really really mediocre weapon into like quite good at killing uh, a lot of targets i think it's like a like an a tier overclock honestly um we'll put it in a i i don't think it's better than m1000 but the overclock improves the drag a lot um okay next we're moving on to scout secondaries this is the last category believe it or not um starting with the boomstick we have a lot of pretty similar options here i feel like we can talk about them in conjunction because they all do very similar things uh, we're missing jumbo shells for whatever reason in this tier list but compact shells, stuff shells, and jumbo shells all do very similar things. Um, compact shells lets you take double damage without feeling like you don't have that much ammo, um, and you still end up with like 30 max ammo. Um, stuff shells lets you take single damage and still do pretty good damage, or you can take double damage and have a little bit more damage um, than base while still having more ammo than like single damage jumbo um jumbo lets you take double ammo and have a little bit more damage than base uh and a little more ammo than compact or you can take a single damage mod and have a little bit more damage than stuff shells with double damage um i think it's like a broad spectrum of boomstick use cases depending on your playstyle and your uh if you're in solo or in a team or in pubs or whatever i think all of them are like basically the same thing um yeah pretty much i mean you like jumbo does stray a little farther from the others and that you can go heavier towards burst damage and low mm -hmm. ammo than the others if you want to but most of the time the things that people run are kind of similar to one another yeah i think they're also uh, all like pretty big upgrades to the boomstick um it's a lot yeah, more they're ammo. all noticeable yeah i think that like i mean i think you could literally put like all of these in b yeah, I wouldn't disagree. And then, like, edit in a 
Or jump over <laughs> uh, shells. Jump over shells later. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And then... I think special powder is also BB, by the yeah. way, because I don't really think it's like. People sometimes have hot takes in either direction about it being like super good for scouts mobility. I think it's good for scouts mobility. Mm -hmm, for sure. I don't think it's like super amazing. People also sometimes say a scout doesn't need mobility, which isn't really true either. It still gives you extra safety. It still like lets you do stuff faster in ways that you couldn't otherwise. Um, yeah. When the boomstick stays fine as a weapon. Mm -hmm. I, 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 think I, th the... I think it's again it's nice it's not like it's it's better than the stuff in c it's not as good as the stuff in a yeah I, I would agree i also think like the the part of it where you can't jump in boomstick is is also like a significantly underlooked aspect of it it does make the boomstick more awkward as a weapon and recently i've like found myself uh starting to shift towards not using special powder at all because i value the flexibility but i think it still does provide a lot of survivability and a lot of mobility um and a lot of ease of use um for the boomstick uh, yeah I, I i agree it's like a it's a b tier over clock i would say um shape shells now it used to be really bad now it's like pretty good i think uh it's just four or less max ammo but you get half spread um it makes you a lot better at killing stuff at a range so it's nice for killing spitballers from a range if you want to do that. Uh, it's nice for Mactera, um, Menaces, whatnot. Um, I don't think it's amazing. It does kind of suffer from the minus ammo penalty. Um, and taking so taking like double damage on it doesn't feel great. Um, but I think it's just a generally pretty strong upgrade to the boomstick. I think I think I like it a bit less than you, but I think it's fine. Mm. Um I would put this in C, but like a high C. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I think it can that. be a bit more defined, like really ideal use cases for it compared to the other overclocks. But it, it's still like, I do think it is compared to base, it is worth taking. Yes, I would agree. I think it's like a high C. Yeah, I can agree with that. Um, next, we have a new one. It's kind of cut off here, but I think that's a double barrel. Um, this is technically not new, but it's basically new. Um, it just doubles your shockwave damage, uh, and also both of your shots are compressed into one. Um, I think it's pretty good as a, as grunt clear for Scout. I think it's like some of the strongest on-demand grunt clear that Scout has. Um, I think at doing the things that Scout typically wants to do in a team, it's not as good. Um, like but not like that much worse. Yeah, it's not that much worse. Uh but it's 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 not it's not as good. Um it still has a really strong run clear niche though. Uh and like if you put an IFG and into yeah, a joke. This is again like, something like, that feels better if you're solo or with random yes. players. Yeah. I think compared it's compared to good. a coordinated team. I think it's like about the same same level honestly as the other overclocks um it has some really strong moments and it has some relatively weak moments um yeah it's yeah it's it's pretty good um uh, next we have the zukovs um starting with middle magazines this is another plus no actually it's plus rate of fire with this one uh, plus two rate of fire i believe and a bit faster reload speed. Uh, reload speed does actually matter on the Zukovs because it doesn't really have a, an animation cancel. Um, this one's okay, I guess. Uh, the plus two rate of fire is, in reality, like not actually plus two because the Zukovs are funky. Um, and it's it's not like a very big boost at all. It's like a 7% boost to DPS. Um, yeah, it's like, it's honestly barely different from the base gun at all. Uh, I think it's like basically the same thing. Yeah, I mean, your your real rate of fire is like worse than what it shows too. So it's plus two rate of fire is not very good. Yeah. I don't know. This is, again, it is technically strictly better, but it's close enough that we can put it in equivalent to base. Yeah. 
Uh, next, custom casings. This is plus 30 mag size and minus 4 rate of fire. Um, like, it lets you just fire the Zukovs for longer, but that's not a really valuable thing to do. Um, because Scout doesn't really want to be standing there firing their weapon for like a long time. Um, and the minus rate of fire, minus 4 this time, is actually... It's noticeable, it's like a minus 10%, uh, a little bit more than that. Um, and also the Zukov's reload is not bad at all, and also you can take tier 5, um, get in, get out if you want, and it's even nicer to reload. I don't think this overclock is very strong. Um, I don't think it's like worse than nothing, though. Yeah. I don't, I, again, it might be another equivalent to base, I guess. Yes. With the rate of fire downside. I think it's also like especially hard to deal with the Zukovs because the Zukovs just do nothing. <laughs> um, okay, we have Cryo Milots now. This is a polarizing one. Um, the downsides are not like that bad. It's just minus 10 mag size and minus 1 direct damage. Um, and if you build this for ammo, you get or with tier 1 ammo, you got a pretty absurd amount of ammo. But the only thing you can really freeze are like grunts and prates sometimes and oppressors if you really you try. You can sometimes you can sometimes freeze wardens. But yeah, like yeah. yeah, I mean it's it's not I I think you generally shouldn't be freezing oppressors with this. I think yes. that it's very gimmicky. It is an, yet another thing where it's like if you're playing with an uncoordinated random team, this can be pretty good. You can carry with this with some with some green beards. If you're playing with people who know what's up, it's not that good. Um, like, I mean, probably the best thing for it then, I guess, would be if you're playing with a driller that's using cryo cannon. But in that case, you probably actually want to use gas recycling because mm -hmm. uh, he's already going to be freezing stuff fast, and then you can capitalize on that more. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I I, I think I would still put this as high as B tier. Um, I think it's it does do a lot for Zukovs. I think it's awkward to work this into like a planned out team. I think if you're playing solo on normal difficulties, or if you are just playing with randoms, it's still pretty good. Um, yeah, I I don't disagree, though. I feel like a big reason why I don't like my looks that much is because you're sacrificing the scout's secondary slot which is generally like very powerful like you're you're not taking cryo bolts you're not taking any of the special bolts you're not taking the boomstick and i think like double barrel is kind of better way of clear than this um yeah i mean i i there are a number of things i would rather use than this but like i, I think it does i mean the again quite a pulling bit, it yeah, pulling it back to like what are we rating this by? Am I happy to get cryo minelets? Yeah, because it it buffs Zukovs quite a bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm I'm down to put it in B. Uh, next, embedded detonators. Um, I think like this this overclock is a case study in how disappointing the Zukovs are as a weapon because it like doubles your uh, DPS or more than doubles your DPS against. Uh, large tanky one times weak point targets uh and like still has more dps against 2x weak points um but it's like still not that good uh, i think the big problems with it are that you have to stand still for a while shooting them and you don't get immediate damage um and against a lot of the scout enemies that scout cares about killing like uh like mectera and goobers and even like speedballers yeah, it's not very good against a lot of enemies that Scout normally wants to pick off. It's basically just you unload into, like, tanky enemies like Praetorians and Oppressors. Uh, and, like, Amor and Rocks. Yeah. <laughs> and it is, it's good against those targets. Um, it's not, like, so amazingly good to make it, like, a best-in-slot option. And yeah. it's, like... It is, I think, a bit overrated because, like... The damage is good, but you have to consider like the the shooting the Zukovs leading up to that means. I mean, how much are you spending? Like to to dump 
those shots and oh, I think I think it depends on it depends on your mag yeah, size and rate of fire size, but, but like it's, it's about I mean typically I'm taking like tier tier 2a mm -hmm. the rate of fire is 15 really then 15 to dump actually 20 shots so you're you are spending a little more than a second to fire all of those shots so it, it's not like that bursty of damage yeah yeah like compared to a boomstick with some damage ups and double trigger just popping out two shots in like less than you know a quarter of a second or whatever yeah it's not that impressive of damage output. It's still good damage output, but it's not like amazing. Yeah, and I think you you're particularly feel so that. much less flexible. Yeah, I, I think you particularly feel that against like spitballers because, like, one of the things you can do as scout is you can like shoot the the spitballer twice in the weak point, and you can run up to it with broomstick and just immediately kill it, uh, from like half or a little over half. Um, but the deaths you you kind of have to play careful because you have to spend so long shooting into the target. Um. I think they're overrated. I think they make the Zukovs a pretty decent single target option. Um, but they're not great against enemies that Scout typically wants to be good at killing. Um, yeah, and you gotta consider, like, what if instead you used the Boomstick, fired both shots, and then immediately switched to your primary and started yeah. shooting? Yeah, It'll exactly. end up being pretty similar sustained damage to Embedded Detonator Zukovs and, like, with other useful use cases that embedded detonator Zukovs doesn't get. So it's yeah. like, I don't know. Like I, I I still would probably put this alongside Cryo Mine Let's mm -hmm. in B yeah, for similar agree. reasons. But it's like it is an overhyped overclock, I think. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I did not I always believe that for the record, but that's something that I don't know, past few months or whatever I've been like, man, this isn't really like that good. Yeah. Also against dreads it's it's so overblown. Like stacking embedded deaths is not good. Uh, it only works against some of their phases. Yeah, yeah. And then the rest of the time, you just have no secondary. Um, which is not great. Uh, okay, moving on. We have gastrocycling. Talking about this a bit earlier, I think this suffers from a lot of the same problems as crime remnants and embedded deaths. Um, you move slower while you're using it, but you have more armor break, but you have no weak point. But you have a bit more damage, uh, six actually extra, which is quite a bit. But like its target pool is 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 really just like grunts. Um, the lack of weak point means it's really bad against Spectera. It's really bad against Spitballers. Um, it's okay against Praetorians and Oppressors, but not that good. Um, and the slower move speed while using it is is a little clunky. Um, I just don't think it's like it's very good for a scout specifically because you don't really want to be standing still or moving slowly and killing a couple grunts. Um, but I think yeah, it makes well, like it's it's nice if you are glued to a cryo driller. Uh -huh. It's nice for lazy builds where you're just kind of you take like a you take a gun that's good at single target and then you take this to shoot some grunts with. Yeah, for just doing an assignment or whatever, and you just go and do whatever yeah it'll never be like the optimal tryhard pick i think it's like okay for those sorts of things yeah i, I, I definitely don't think it's I, I think it's at least a bit of an upgrade over base i would yeah. put it in c yeah i would agree i would agree it's like it's it's trash if you have like a real team comp uh because scout just should not care about the enemies that this kills um and like against swarmers it's completely useless which are usually the only enemies that scout really gets harassed by um if you're in a team comp because when you're like yeah, out, like swarmers you, you really can one shot swarmers with the shots, uh, and like that, it might look okay on paper, but like you really do not want to be flicking between individual swarmers. Yeah, in I would much rather pop a group of swarmers with a single boomstick shot. Yeah, while while you're moving slowly <laughs> because of the overclock. Um, okay, that's it for the Zukovs. We're moving on to the Bulchurk, the last weapon in our list. It's been like four hours. Holy shit. Um, starting with, it's unlabeled, but this is, uh, Quickfire. I think Quickfire is a pretty strong clean, honestly. Um, the extra bolt move speed is actually really quite nice against, uh, like, tri draws and whip spitters and acid yeah. spitters. This is um, nice when you're taking the Bolt Shark to, like, supplement your ability to kill, um, 
have a things like yeah, try draws, ass bears, everything you just said, basically, and like that might not ideally be the situation you're in, but like if you're running, maybe you're running like thermal exhaust feedback drac, which is okay at killing those things, but not as good as M1K. You know, maybe you take this so that you can like one shot pop a try draw mm-hmm. after flicking to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it'll your bolt will hit, hit it faster, and that's pretty nice. Yeah, the reload speed buff is also like very relevant because again, yeah. the bolt track doesn't have a reload cancel. Um, I think it's generally a pretty strong clean. I don't think it's like game changing or anything. Um, but it it feels really nice to have. It's like probably the high end of C for me. Yeah, I don't think it. I don't think it can get higher than that. But I think it. It definitely can't get lower than that. Mm-hmm. Um, next we have the specialist. This is pretty good. Uh, the special bolts, especially pheromones, are quite strong, and having like twenty five percent more ammo on them and thirty percent more effect duration is is pretty good. Um, but you're you have to account for the opportunity cost with like these two overclocks, which are quite strong. Um, I think it's I think it's a pretty noticeable difference. Like you almost fully kill a, a Hazard Five four player Praetorian with two Taser bolts with this, um, and having that bit of extra duration on your Ferro bolts is really good. Um, they don't really benefit chem bolts that much, but. It's just like, it's a it's a solid upgrade, I'd say. Yeah, I don't know if I would. Again, I think this is probably a C tier, but mm-hmm. again, it's a good C tier. Yeah, as they're like high C. As far as cleans go, these are both pretty good overclocks. Um, okay, now we're at cryo bolts. Um, I think these are really really strong, though that might because of the difficulties I play. Um, they're yeah. amazing. I mean, if, if you were talking like specifically like lunatic times two, this would be S tier. Yes, I agree. Like literally required for that difficulty. Um, because they kill stationary so easily. Like three cry bolts to kill a breeder. Yeah. When you when you need to clear baller. through like seven breeders and like twelve spitballers out in like a room or two, then like yeah, cryo bolts are amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh in normal gameplay like has five pubs and whatnot. I do find that sometimes this these are one of the overclocks that pubs just tend to ignore and you like try to crowd runs, but your teammates just kill them before they reach them. Um I think it's still very yeah. nice though. Um Yeah, I I think in general this still belongs in like A tier. Yes, I agree. And they're very strong in solo as well. Um Especially comboed with Pharaoh Bolts, you can get some pretty insane grunt control and clear. Yeah, I'll put them in A tier. Okay, next. We have Fire Bolts. Um, I think these are extremely strong in solo. Uh, they're like the best wave clear that Scout has in solo. Um, but in team play, they're kind of not great uh like the only time you really get use of out of them is like against like four grunts that your team doesn't bother killing or like against some swarmers uh swarmer nests or yeah they 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 are like worse the more you are playing with and near your team Mm -hmm. um which doesn't mean only solo because sometimes sometimes a scout you're just off in a different part of the cave Mm -hmm. um i do think like it is worth mentioning in my uh Bolt Shark video, which came out like not long after the Bolt Shark did, I was like, I, I don't think Firebolts are that good. Now I'm like, eh, Firebolts are really good. Mm-hmm. But that's the kind of thing I don't normally like, you know, post an update about because I don't want to post a video saying, oh guys, Firebolts are good actually. <laughs> but like, yeah, they're they're very strong situationally. In other situations, they're not that great. In general, yeah. they're still very good. Yeah, I think they're like a B tier. I think most of the time you'd prefer Cryobolts. Um, yeah, they're they have... not as good as Cryobolts, but they are they are good. Yeah. They they have their moments. And of course all the all the ball trick builds have special bolts which are very strong in general. Yeah. Um next we have Bogdan points. I think this it's like the opposite of firebolts, in yes. that firebolt scales better and better with enemy density and this scales worse and worse. Yes. Like this is one of those overclocks that's hilarious to me because 
balance wise, it just doesn't make sense, right? Like on has three, you click once and you wipe half the swarm. And then like on has five, it's 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 really mediocre. Uh, you lose a lot of really nice breakpoints that the bullet truck naturally has against high value targets in exchange for like sometimes killing three grunts. Uh, sometimes you get okay value versus Mechterra, uh, but that's about it. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I like Bodkin Bolts because I think it's, it is easy to use and it's fun to have the bolts bouncing around. Yeah. It is, it's difficult to justify a lot of the time because, I mean, if you're in situations where you don't have good angles on anything other than one or two enemies, then it's like, it's, it's kind of nice. But like, it's, it's too niche, yeah, basically. Yeah, I, I would it, agree. It is kind of nice against Mactera, but you have better things for them. Yeah. So, eh, whatever. Yeah, I think it's like, it's it's here or here. I think it's, they're really fun, but I I think most of it the depends time, on the difficulty you're playing yeah. on more than almost anything else. Yeah, I I agree. I think on like on Has Five, they're probably just worse. But if you're like playing on Has Four, then they're probably pretty strong. Um, and especially like as veteran density increases with your difficulty, these fall off pretty. Yeah, drastically. if you're frequently. Getting guards and slashers then it becomes a lot worse yeah um i'll put this here for now I, th I think they're like i think they belong here if you're playing the harder difficulties or especially modded um but they're fun and like if you're a newer player definitely give them a try uh okay our last one here it's kind of the opposite trifork which just makes you shoot three bolts at once um and you get a bit more max ammo, but a bit less damage per bolt, and the significantly longer reload time. Um, these are kind of weird. Uh, in particular, they can have like really good situations. Yeah, you I, can I have think situations where you one shot a menace or a warden or something like that, mm -hmm. and and goobers. Uh, yeah, they like they kind of. It's weird, right? Because they have. High burst, sort of, but you need to enable the burst with something beforehand, so mm -hmm. like not really. Yeah, and and also the fact that they gave Praetors and Oppressors Pierce Resist. Yeah, means this is Praetorians and Oppressors should not have Piercing Resist. Yeah, and Tri Trevor it, really it, suffers because of that. Yeah, it it's like it's really ammo efficient to use them on Praetorians and Oppressors, even if you take the time to proc electricity. Um. And it's so like, generally, you know, your target pool is, is pretty limited. It's like smaller than Praetorians and Goober or above. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, like, I honestly, I still think Trifork is in a fine place overall. But because it only works well on certain enemies, it, it only works well on big enemies that are not the common big enemies. Mm -hmm. So you have long stretches of missions or sometimes entire missions where you don't have good opportunities to use it yeah yeah but then when you do have good opportunities to use it you can just like one shot goo bombers and it feels awesome yeah yeah i agree i think it's it's very awkward um if enemy diversity was a bit better on has five or a bit higher on has five i think it'd be fine uh and if mag shafts was a little more consistent um in terms of like actually hitting weak points um and whatnot i think it'd also be better um but like the spread of the bolts and the pretty limited target pool of trifork i feel like it's it's hard to put it higher than c for me i think c tier makes sense yeah and that is the last one we have yeah. finished after like four and a half hours we're clocking in. yeah we're clocking in at uh four hours and 40 minutes of recording yeah holy I hope shit you have... <laughs> fun doing editing to this <laughs> oh god okay we'll go over everything pretty briefly see if there's anything we'd like to move up or down um the only important thing to remember is you need to put jumbo shells into b tier after the fact yes yeah in the image uh i feel like these two overclocks are maybe not in the a tier necessarily but i, I don't mind them being where they are um I think it would it would be reasonable to drop them down to B tier, but I think like 
again from the like the the standpoint of how happy am i to find these i think both of those are a tier for me at least mm -hmm. yeah yeah I, I can agree yeah they're they're pretty pretty significant upgrades to the warthog and the warthog is a pretty good gun as well um i feel a little bit awkward about this top row of c tiers i feel like lighter tanks is not as strong as quickfire hydrogen iron additive is like not as strong as almo or splintering shells i feel like these two probably should move down to here um, uh yeah that's fine i don't have a any strong feeling about that also this shit <laughs> how did this make it into the seater in the first place i don't even know are you a magnetic cooling unit yeah I well, remember. I guess it's it's like okay, it's fine. I don't I don't feel like it's like heavy hitter tier or in the same yeah. vein as the rest well, of these. I mean, you might as well now now that everything is in their spots, you could go rename like C to OK, B to good, A to great. You know? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Because the first two have. Oh wait. Okay. Okay. Good. Great. And then what yeah. is S tier? <laughs> like broken, maybe. Busted. Uh, or X Factor. Crazy shit. Yeah. Can't get to monetize though. Uh <laughs> you're allowed like one. I don't know. I don't know how it deals <laughs> with written text staying on the screen though. Uh yeah, I'll just say like overpowered, I guess. That hurts Overpower me. Overpowered. B. That hurts me. Okay. And that's it. Here's an overview of the Overclock tier list. I said it in the beginning, and I'll say it again now. Do not let me or my opinions stop you from using what you find fun. There will be a link to the completed Overclock tier list in the description. Happy mining out there. Rock and stone.